off sale. Joe. All right, Kenny, and uh, Ray's offense feeling pretty good about themselves coming off of that 5 0 win last night. Well, another night and another young pitcher, John. This is the 22 year old out of Texas, Shane Boz, who pitched in seven games in double A. Then he goes to triple A for 10 starts, pitches in the Olympics, makes his major league debut three weeks ago. And here in his fourth career big league start, it comes in the postseason. Well, he looks the part. His heartbeat seems to be right. His mindset seems to be okay. And why wouldn't you think so when the Rays run out a young, polished pitcher? They know he's able to handle. He's handled the leadoff hitter, the top of the order. They don't get many hits off of him against two strikes. I know it's not a lot of work in innings, but the innings he did pitch, electric fastball slider combination. Starting lineup sponsored by Good Sam looks like this, similar to what you saw in the wild card game against the Yankees with Kyle Schwarber leading off. Fernandez, then Devers, Bogarts, Verdugo, and yes, JD Martinez back in there, DH in hitting sixth. Renfro Vasquez and Christian Arroyo round things out. Tampa Bay a 5 0 win in game one behind five shuttered innings from Shane McClanahan. All set for game two. McClanahan to Boz. Works out of the stretch at all times. Off we go with a fastball inside. It's 1 0 on Schwarber. Well, the Red Sox last night, John, had nine hits, but they were all singles and they didn't do anything once they had guys on. Yeah, they had a chance, especially when the second inning had first and second nobody out after kind of a misplayed ball. And that's the kind of inning the Red Sox usually make a pitcher pay. Had an opportunity late as well, loaded the bases with just one out, couldn't score. Tampa Bay got its first shutout in the postseason since 2013. Even with the exceptional pitching they've had in these recent postseason runs, something they hadn't done in a while. Bob's upstairs with a fastball, and it's 2-0. Well, I said it last night. I'll say it again tonight, and I'll probably say it every game. The first three innings are huge for either team because of what they can do out of the bullpen. And the Red Sox are going to have to put some pressure on this young man and see how he handles it. Pitches out of the stretch. Talked about the way he handles opponent's batting average. I mean you touched on this last night as well but you pitched in a lot of postseason games over the course of your career but you had 111 regular season games before you got to this point. Boss has had three. Yeah it's 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 really hard to explain to the viewer and the fan at home like he is trying to treat it like a normal game but it's oh, not a normal game and you can say and do all the right things until you actually get out in, 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 in the action of a postseason game. Your grip's different, your heartbeat's different, and when you can get back to the feeling of a regular season game, then you're fine. But it takes a while. It's not instant for everybody. Well, this is totally different than what he saw his first few outings when command location was exceptional. He walks the leadoff man on four pitches. And a Boston team that didn't have a single walk last night gets one first hitter tonight. And here's Kike Hernandez. Shane Boz, who is so calm, so confident. Delivers strike one to Hernandez. Says he got it from his parents, Raj and Tammy, who were never too high, never too low. This guy that was a first round draft pick of the Pittsburgh Pirates at a high school in Texas and then part of that Chris Archer deal. The deadline in 2018. He had never pitched above a ball before this year. The 22 year olds 0 1 pitch is hit in the air down the line hooking foul. Well, right now he had a semi playoff game against the Yankees the reason it was semi because it was a playoff game for the Yankees and not for the Rays but he he struggled in the first inning and then settled down and got out of it in on the road and that taught hit, that showed his manager something right now he's being real smooth which is OK but they're going to have to be a little bit more finished on his pitches when he gets in that rhythm when he's when he's right it's late life sharp break and you'll see the fastball explode in the zone. When he gets the two strikes so far as a big leaguer he's been almost untouchable. Hitters are two for twenty nine. Once Boz gets two strikes on 18 strikeouts in those twenty nine at bats. Oh 
0 and 2 on Kike Hernandez after the leadoff walk to Kyle Schwarber. Postseason veteran of 61 games in Hernandez on an 0-2 fouls it again. He'll reach 100. He doesn't have to, and that's why I like about his style. You know, the one thing you don't want to be in between is a, in, be in between as a pitcher. Meaning, okay, I don't want to overthrow and grunt, but I don't want to be so methodical and light and, and not and just lay it in there. You don't want to lay it in there, but you want to be able to be in that zone in between the nice and easy and overthrowing is where you want to be in these kind of games. A sweet spot. Yeah. Another 0-2 is pulled sharply and fair down the line into the left field corner for Kike Hernandez. And the Red Sox doing what the Rays did in the first inning last night. And that is jump on him quickly. Second and third, nobody out in the Kike double. See, to me, this pitch is rolling too much as a slider. And you see how that ball went over the bag, even though it landed on the other side of the fair territory and it had just crossed the bag and that's all it has to do and what I mean it's rolling it's not having that late life it's almost like he's throwing it for a strike instead of breaking it from the strike zone out so that pitch will have to drastically improve against a great offensive team like the Red Sox a lot of talk John about Rafael Devers last night and reports in Boston that he's dealing with an injured right arm. He said a compression sleeve on there for about the last week and he just did not look right on a lot of those swings. First one here is low for ball one. Alex Cord downplayed it. He said look it's October. Nobody's completely right at this point but it's hard to deny that it's like something's going on with it. Yeah no doubt. I mean and you, as a player you're going to. You're going to kind of stand pat with not letting anybody believe otherwise. Infield comes partially in for Tampa Bay. Uh, Devers takes <laughs> a strike. It's one and one. Devers is going to see a lot of fastballs tonight. Uh, he saw a lot of fastballs last night and really struggled with them up in the zone. And mentioned with the bases loaded. 15 of the 19 pitches he saw last night were fastballs and over the course of the year sees more of them than anybody in baseball. On a 1 1 from Boz he swings and misses at another fastball and that bottom hand that right arm comes off of the bat and it looks just like it did last night. Yeah, not your prototypical finish and certainly not what we're used to seeing from a young man who's dominated. And then there you see again just underneath the baseball can't get the barrel to the ball on high velocity. Boz has gotten a ton of swing and miss in his first few big league starts looking for one here. Second and third nobody out one two fastball inside at ninety nine and ball two. This is only the second at bat against Shane Boz and his four big league starts with a man in scoring position. All three runs he's given up have come off three solo home runs. Schwarber at third, Hernandez at second. On 2 2, Devers swings and misses, half heartedly, one gone. So you see the difference between those fastballs then the fastballs he started the game with who's trying to almost like getting a feel for the strike zone instead of powering through the strike zone. That's that in between. Now he's not in between. He knows with runners on and he knows the guy at the plate if he throws a meatball down the middle even with his swinging the way he is he'd be in trouble. So he has to have the same approach with that slider and when he has those two pitches working that's what's made him so much an elite pitcher here in the last three or four starts. One away. Xander Bogarts comes up. Boston now one for eight with runners in scoring position in these two games. Bogarts has been a monster against Tampa Bay this season. Included a couple of hits last night. 
All-Star shortstop goes after the first pitch and gives Boston its first runs of the series. Schwarber in to score on a base hit from Xander Bogarts. 1-0 Boston in the first inning. Now, remember yesterday, I said Bogarts is going to have to swing on the first pitch and change that scouting report and come up with a big hit. That was a plan. The infield was shifted, and he did that on purpose. So, layup for him when you throw him a fastball, and he hasn't been swinging early in the count. Perfect time to change the uh, kind of scouting report, if you will, and a big run for the Red Sox. And already a visit for Kyle Snyder. Bogart's one of those beautiful hitters that has different swings for different situations. Yeah, he's a, he's a tremendous up in the zone hitter, and and he can do. I'm convinced he's one of the hitters in the league that could do whatever he wants, even if the stylistic philosophy is launch the ball in the air, which most teams are adopting. You could hit and run with him. He could hit for homers, and he could hit the other way. And he did that early on right now. And so walking two hits in this first inning against Shane Boz. Now it's Alex Verdugo went one for four after getting two hits in the wild card game. First one from Boz is foul back. Now for Boston, you've got to get this second run in. First and third. Even if you were to hit into a double play, at least the idea of making contact to get that runner in from third. This is what makes Boston so tough. You don't have a ton of wild swingers that you can kind of maneuver through the lineup and get a lot of strikeouts there. I don't know one Verdugo smashes a line drive into center field and they do get the second run in Verdugo drives home Hernandez 2 nothing Red Sox couple of Los Angeles Dodgers connected in this first inning to give Boston the early 2 nothing lead uh, he's been uh, crushing fastballs off of right handed pitchers and this is what that fastball in the outer half try not to do too much go up the middle short compact swing that's what you're going to have to do let that power of the pitcher work to your advantage beautifully done so sight for sore eyes for Red Sox fans as J.D. Martinez plays his first game since final game of the regular season on Sunday. Rolled his Outside. ankle on Sunday. And wasn't on the wild card roster. Was available to pinch hit yesterday. Wasn't quite ready to be in the starting lineup. And they weren't sure that he was going to be ready for tonight until what, about an hour and a half before first pitch. The lineup finally came out. Normally it's four or five hours before the game. But they had him go through his full battery of tests. Had him take BP. Says he's good to go. And he's ahead here. Two balls and no strikes. Yeah. The slider has not had the feel early on for Shane. Fastball uh, has been pretty good and electric, but you you get down to one pitch against the Boston Red Sox, you're in big trouble. Martinez sitting pretty here with a 2-0 count. Two runners on here in the first inning, already two in the bank. That's it to right, kind of off the end of the bat, but it's going to dunk in for a base hit. They go station to station, and they're loaded. J.D. Martinez kind of miss hits that ball but it's a base hit and an instant impact for him in his first game of the postseason but I'm telling you what these Red Sox hitters showed me so far is stay up the middle go the other way with fastballs if you have to because they're going to shift J.D. in the infield watch him stay back and just let again that stroke to right field almost look like that's what he intended to do. And he was able to hit it that way if he hit it on the ground it was going to be a hit. But unfortunately, that ball was not able to score the runner, Bogarts. A walk and four hits in this first inning for the Red Sox. One of them coming from J.D. Martinez as we check in with Ken. Well, Joe, you saw J.D. run a little gingerly to first base. During batting practice, he sort of jogged halfway up the line. 
And Christian Arroyo and Kyle Schwarber yelled, that's all we need. All that. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Bottom line is, it hurts him more when he runs, obviously. But even hitting, it says it bothers him a little bit as he rolls going forward. Well, he's aboard with a base hit. They're loaded up for Hunter Renfro. Boston looking for a big number in this first inning as Renfro takes strike <laughs> one. That was kind of a joke yesterday from Alex Corey. said he told him, you know, you hit the ball out of the ballpark, you can go ahead and walk around the bases. We don't really need you running anywhere. But there are very few guys in the league that if they never swung the bat, make their club better by in the, being in the lineup because the pitcher doesn't know he's not going to swing the bat, right? If you didn't know someone was hurt and couldn't swing, you're, you're not approaching them that way. You're still approaching them as if they can launch and do everything they want. So that's why certain guys like J.D. Martinez standing in the box with the unknown on the other side of the mound, it works to the Boston Red Sox today. Yeah, well, he fell behind 2-0. Martinez took advantage. J.T. Shagwa warming. We saw Alex Cole with a quick hook last night. You know, Kevin Cash unafraid to move aggressively if he feels the need. Boz is 0-2. He's fouled off. See right here, and again, this is where a little bit of lack of experience. He's got great stuff, and this guy's going to be a great pitcher as long as he stays healthy. But right here, he has to have his breaking ball turn the corner. It has to turn the corner. He's got the hitter in a defensive situation on 0-2 count. Trust your count catcher and get the ball on the outside part of the plate after you just threw a fastball that he fouled down to the right field corner. Bases loaded, first inning. 0 oh, 2 pitch. Renfro grounds it to short. Franco to second one. Lau turns it to first in a double play. Two score, but Boston had a chance for more. 2 0 Red Sox as Chris Sale gets ready to take the ball. They get two in the first of game two. And right now the Red, the Rays come up for the first time with this lineup sponsored by Good Sam. Rosarena and Franco wasted no time last night getting the scoring going. Lau, Cruz, and Diaz, then Luplo again, Margot, Zanino, and Kiermeyer. It is newsworthy. It's the same lineup back-to-back -back games for the first time since the World Series last year for Tampa Bay. And on the mound for the Boston Red Sox is Chris Sale. We're in mid-August. 
pitched in his first big league game in two years coming back from Tommy John and he said he's kind of been figuring it out as he goes. He is a night where they need him badly giving up a base hit to a Rosarena on the first pitch that he throws. My goodness this guy. Yeah leadoff hitters have changed the game a little bit in baseball today where you typically would see a few pitches especially if your team got scored upon in the top half not this guy and not a lot of leadoff hitters who can now thump you from the leadoff spot. He jumped on the first one in a very very difficult hop. So Rosarena who followed up his record setting postseason last year by homering and stealing home in the first game of this postseason. Is a ball with a leadoff hit and now it's Wander Franco. Ken told us off at the top has gone four for six with a home run and a triple against Chris Sale. And he likes the fastball sliders off a of left hander so far. And being a switch hitter of course is always going to have the ball. In the view of his release point the way he wants it meaning the ball's going to come into him as a slider. The only pitch that goes away from him will be the changeup, and again, that changeup for Chris Sale is going to be huge tonight if he's going to have success against this team. Bounce the right base hit. Same thing as the first inning last night. Rosarena and Franco both reach. All right, what are the odds we have three pitches and three swings to start the bottom half of the first? It's pretty, pretty aggressive, isn't it? <laughs> pretty, pretty good for the Rays. Trying to bounce right back after the two on top of the first. First and second for Brandon Lau. Go for four yesterday, although he hit it hard a few times. Hit it really hard a couple times. After a scalding high finish for the regular season, including a three homer, seven RBI game, second to last day at Yankee Stadium. Sliders and changeups against lefties, kryptonite. Slider in the dirt. He'll hand, handle the fastballs, and I look for Chris Sale's fastball today to fluctuate between 94 and 97 depending on the circumstances of what he's trying to do and coming back from Tommy John surgery is the whole evolution of feel good two out of three you get that third one you feel like a clunker you're not connected and then after this season Chris Sale is going to be right back where he wants to be this one or loud is a good one yeah. oh. speaking of clunkers his last time out was one of those Washington game 162. Gave up two runs over two and a third, just didn't have it. Alex Cora pulled him and said, man, he sure was looking forward to hoping he'd have another shot to pitch. A day where his team really needed him and then had to come from behind to force the wild card game. Here's one one. Another good breaking pitch. Well, Randy Johnson was about as nasty of a left hander, and of course, six foot ten ish. You can't imagine left handers trying to hit this pitch with a low three quarters. That ball's starting behind him and then the change of speed to break. And so when he's on, left handers are pretty much neutralized. And when he's on, right handers can be neutralized. He has such a funky delivery, and you see him at six foot six, 183. He, he just, he's one of those unique pitchers that, you know, basically when he pitches, it's double digit strikeouts. Highest strikeout rate in baseball history, owned by Chris Sale. This one's taken low, and it's two and two. And you hear hitters describe facing him the same way you heard hitters describe facing Randy Johnson. Like a lot of times, it feels like the ball's coming from where the second baseman is standing. Yeah, and he can throw those riser fastballs where it looks good out of his hand, and then the ball just stays up above the belt. You're not hitting that pitch. On a 2 2. Wow. Swings and misses. Steady diet of sliders to get his first strikeout. Tell yourself as a left hand hitter to stay in there, stay in there. You try staying in there on a pitch that's coming at your hip and then just disappears on the outside part of the plate. So now down swinging. 
One gone first inning, and up comes Nelson Cruz, who hit his 18th postseason home run last night. And he has had some good numbers against Sale. A lot of meetings between these guys, and he's hit 343 with a pair of home runs. Yeah, he definitely can stay on the ball. They're going to try to get, Sale's going to try to get a lot of change ups away from him and sliders down. He wants them swinging over the top. Ball's up. That's ball misses. And if Cruz can stay off that pitch, then he's narrowed the scope for himself to have success against Chris Sale. When you expand the strike zone against Chris Sale as a hitter, he's got you eaten out of his hand then. You see the numbers on the year or his career. I watched a lot of those head up uh, matchups on video and he hit a lot of ground balls, did Cruz, and that's exactly what Sales want, Sale wants right now is a ground ball double play. Back to back base hits from a Rosarina and Franco to start the inning. Strike out of Lau. Now Nelson Cruz on 1 0. Outside. Takes ball two. Well, right handers have just crushed Chris Sale over his nine starts so far this season. And usually the equalizer against him is that changeup. But yeah. the league's hitting 450 against the change. And the Rays in particular, those two starts in early September, feasted on yeah, and that's what I was talking about when you come back from Tommy John. Your feel is not complete. There are days where you've got it. There's days where it just the ball feels like the grapefruit. I would imagine that's not good. No. Ball three and zero. And that's just a professional hitter. That's why Cruz is so good. I mean, other guys in a situation like this would try to make something happen, swing at the first pitch, and put themselves in the hole. There's the splits for sale. I guarantee you that reverses itself next year. But it's not an automatic take right here for this powerful hitter, Nelson Cruz. Here it comes. Four. Four pitch walk to load him up. A lot of traffic in this first inning. Red Sox took advantage. Rays are trying to do the same with the Andy Diaz coming up. Both pitching coaches having to make the early trip. Dave Bush out to talk with Sale and I'm gonna let you know Fox Bed Super Six is giving you a chance to win $5,000 of Big Poppy's money during tonight's game. It's free to play. Just enter now before the contest closes for your chance at $5,000. Scan the QR code now, download the app, and play for free. Well, this is where he would really need his changeup against Diaz. Diaz has handled left handers everything but four seam fastballs and changeup so far on this year and jamming him inside. That's where you're going to get a ground ball. Well, you talk about, you know, if you're going to chase Chris Sale, you got no shot. Yandy Diaz doesn't chase. Right. He is one of the one of the most disciplined hitters in the American League. High average, high on base guy that picks his spots to cut it loose. Fouls off the first one from Sale. No balls, one strike. The lefty comes back home. And Diaz takes a ball, one and one. That's evidence of what you're talking about that that could have been easily attacked and swung and missed or even ground into a double play. It's one of those pitches you make and say oh OK exactly the pitch I wanted to your cap uh, fastball is hit foul one and two. A Rosarena what he did last night Franco. Making a beautiful entrance into the postseason, took, took the headlines, but Yandy Diaz quietly as he's done a lot of the year. Solid defense, reached a couple of times, had an infield hit that scored a run. And has a big chance here in the first inning. He comes through with a base hit past Schorber. Franco throws on the brakes, retreats to third, is in safe, and it's 2-1 and a base hit from Yandy Diaz.
I'm going to tell you something right now. That that is really, really good piece of hitting. Down in the count with two strikes. Doesn't swing out of the zone much. Less than 20%. Let's the ball travel and lets it get deep and hits a bullet right past Schwarber. And right now, the Rays are trying to take the lead and are in a good position to tie the game up. Jordan Lupo. Fastball in the corner, strike one. The guy they acquired from the Cleveland Indians at the trade deadline never played first base in his life. But they liked what he does against left handed pitching. 900 career OPS against lefties. That was really the only spot they could get him into the game. So he said, okay, I'll give it a try. Handful of games as the season went on. He went down to Triple A Durham for the final week of the regular season to get more practice there. And activated for this American League Division Series, starting the first two games against lefties. Now, I would think in this count, he's put two fastballs by him. But when I look at the way that they're getting him out with sliders and changeups again we haven't seen the changeup I don't believe yet it's been a lot of sliders and slow breaking balls bases loaded one gone the 0 2 fastball is turned around Jordan Luplo grand slam are you kidding me It's amazing. I mean, it, I prepped for this series and I didn't have really him <laughs> to prep for, but I'm shocked that wasn't a breaking ball off speed right there. Tried to climb the ladder with a fastball and he tomahawked it. Strike out Margo. I really am shocked. I mean, that, that was classic two strikes. Got to get him to chase. Bases loaded and he didn't miss a pitch in his eyes. And that's kind of the joke, right? It's like Jordan Luplo, who this, who? So he's on the roster. Oh wait, he's playing. Oh, of course he's going to hit a home run or something, right? Because that's kind of how it goes for these Rays. Amazing. Magic touch. Might have been the first changeup right there, and uh, didn't have feel for it. One ball, two strikes on Margot. First grand slam that Chris Sale has allowed in his four seasons with the Red Sox. His one-two pitch. Lifted to right for Hunter Renfro. Yeah, we go back to the pitch that Jordan Luplo crushed for the biggest swing of his big league life. I mean, the only way you hit this pitch is you don't come off fastball and you see it. 94, top of the zone. He knew it. Everyone knew it. And he just had a incredible bat to ball that was a ball grand slam and again that might have been one of those pitches you set up to get to the breaking ball and he hit the setup pitch because it really did scream for a breaking ball right there. And it has Shane Boz screaming. Boy is uh, the temperature of the room changed for him giving up two runs in the first inning to lead him by three. Mike Zimino takes ball one. In the first inning so far, I've seen five incredible at bats on both sides. Just classic, old school, take what they're giving you, and that set up the opportunity for each team to drive in the runs. And if you're a Red Sox fan, you're not thinking any way that Chris Sale is going to give up five in the bottom half. Really changed the tone of this game, and of course, has given the young man, Boz, a little better feeling. Yeah, a little bit of new life.
Ball. Check swing, two and one. Well, last night Eduardo Rodriguez didn't even complete two innings. That being the case, Red Sox bullpen is about as well set up as it could be given those circumstances. Nick Pavetta went four and two thirds. And then Richards, Taylor, and Adovino, they combined to throw 14 pitches total. Oh, ball. Good, buddy. But still, you're going to need to get what you can out of Chris Sale here. Yeah, I'm sure his. Demeanor has been shook and shook a little bit. You're a classic power, great pitcher. You, you just don't ever expect that to happen to you. And it doesn't look like much right now, but when Nelson Cruz was up there and took that walk, I mean, there's a couple close pitches early, but he knew exactly what the situation called for. And Passed the baton on his teammates behind him really came up clutch. And you see Matt Barnes warming. Question at this point is how many pitches you're going to let him throw in one inning? Guy coming off Tommy John surgery, just his 10th game back. This will be the 29th pitch of this first inning of Chris Sale. Another 2 2. Zanino chops it foul. Do it again. Well, the last time Chris Sale was on the mound in the postseason, with the final three outs of the World Series in 2018, but he has not been a good postseason pitcher overall. 7.36 ERA as a postseason starter. Strikes out Zanino on a breaking pitch, and that's the inning. But what an inning it was for Tampa Bay. They scored five in game one. They scored five in the first inning of game two. It starts with a Rosarena and Franco again. Those guys you expect, but Jordan Luplo, Luplo.
28 year old Jordan Luplos played parts of five major league seasons never a bigger swing than he had in the first inning here against Chris Sale to make it 5 2 Tampa Bay Christian Vasquez first pitch of the second bangs a base hit the other way against Shane Boz. Well new life for Boz that immediately gives up a base hit here. Well they got to get Christian Vasquez going that would help this already really good lineup. And again you're seeing kind of a smooth get me over fastball. And it didn't work out very well. See how smooth he was trying to get ahead. I think that's the problem when you get in these games. You've got to be able to be connected where you just not. I don't call it RPM pitching where you just rev up and grunt but you, every pitch has to have a purpose and every pitch has to be connected just like he was throwing in his three games. But how do you find that sweet spot without going out there and living. Correct. Corner and two on Arroyo. The slider's more like a cutter, you know, and it, it'll it'll evolve as he continues to pitch. He'll start getting it to turn the corner a little bit more. Action going in the Rays bullpen. Josh Fleming. It's action in the Red Sox bullpen as well. Oh and two. Boz deals. Chopper left side. Diaz. One play. One out. The second goes Number Christian Vasquez. Tanner Howe gets ready to go. You mentioned the bullpen usage pretty good yesterday, given the fact that got just one and two thirds from Rodriguez, as well set up as you could be after that. And you have the off day tomorrow. So if you feel like Chris Sale doesn't have it, you got the freedom to act, and it looks like that's what Alex Corey is going to do. Second time through the lineup for the Red Sox. Kyle Schwarber started this game with a four pitch walk. First one here. Hops the mid strike one. See, that's easy gas. That's what you call late life easy gas. The first one was a kind of a BP fastball through the Vasquez. Now the, the, the thing about Schwarber is you have a true slider he's going to struggle with it. But if your slider looks like a cutter he's going to crush it. He loves the cutters. He loves fastballs. And the slider is really his kryptonite. I mean, that's the pitch he swings over the top. You hang it, and it's hitting one of those rings here in the stadium. <laughs> oh, one. Perfectly done. Drops it over the outside corner, strike two. Had a Nelson Cruz home run off of one of the rings last night. Works of the truck. Vasquez in second, one gone. No balls, two strikes on Kyle Schwarber. Boz delivers, and Schwarber swings. He looked fooled. Comes up empty, two out. These breaks at 84 seem to be a little bit better than you have it at 87. You can see he took some off that pitch. I can't even imagine. I'm assuming that's it's his mom. His Tammy. mom. Yep. And I, I look back at the videos of where they filmed my dad in 1991 in Game Seven. And I really didn't, you know, know what that's like until you do it yourself as a dad. I mean, I feel for parents in games like this when they're watching their. Their sons do something for the first time with anticipation of hope. Two gone second inning. Kika Hernandez, who doubled in the first, watches one miss, ball one. Shane Boz says that uh, he, he feels like he's doing what he was born to do. As a toddler, the progression went crawl, throw, walk. He was yeah. sitting and throwing to his mom before he was walking. That his earliest memories are of uh, pitching to his dad. Dad sitting on the bucket in the backyard, lined up and throw it to him. Glide off the end of the bat. And ball. 
Well, when you see her, he's into it, right? He is locked in. Probably did about 25 <laughs> dumbbells before he came in here. He's locked and loaded. He, Dad Roger was born in Beirut, grew up playing soccer, moved to the United States as a really good football and basketball player. Didn't know anything about baseball, but because Shane took a liking to it as a kid, learned everything that he could to become his coach. One of the things that he did was he joined a slow pitch softball team. And the intent was to learn just kind of how the bat and ball game worked. But it became he was so good that he played professionally. Slow pitch softball professionally for the Coors Light Silver Bullets. <laughs> I bet he hit bombs. Well, tough spot here when you know the bullpen's going. You're not given much more room for error here in a playoff game. Behind Hernandez and now off the glove of Zunino allows Vasquez to take third. In a regular season game, no one would be even be up. Matt Whistler has joined Josh Fleming. Fleming, the only left hander in the Rays bullpen. The righty and Whistler to join him. As the count goes to three and one on Hernandez. Red Sox trying to take advantage of the leadoff hit from Vasquez. On three one, Hernandez sits a chopper left side, cut off by Franco. That does it for the Red Sox in the second. Five two, Tampa Bay here in game two. Like he's bored. So Chris Sale lasts one inning, and it's 25-year-old rookie Tanner Houck that comes on. I think this young man has a chance to be really, really good for the Red Sox. He's got a unique kind of low three-quarter delivery, good action to his pitches. Just needs the reps. I think he. Uh, be a starter for these guys down the road. 
Nine one and two for the Rays here in the second. Kevin Kiermeyer oh. takes ball one from Hauk. The key will be because he can be really tough on right handers is how he'll do against left handers with that kind of action. And if you're Kiermeyer, you're like, really? I don't have to face sale. Yeah. That's a bonus. Flies the first this one into center field. Hernandez feeling for the wall and plenty of room there as he steps out of the warning track for the first out of the inning. And so Chris Sale gives up five runs in one inning and what a disaster for the Red Sox starting pitchers in this series Rodriguez and then Sale combined to allow seven runs in two and two thirds. Yeah he just wasn't obviously sharp but he wasn't it wasn't because he wasn't getting the two strikes he just didn't have the put away pitch. And Alex noticed that and there's no reason to run him back out there. You can utilize him later in the series if they could, you know come back and win and stretch the series out. Randy chance this better be a slider. Just based on it. shouldn't be anywhere close to the heart of the plate either. Ooh, it was a slider and it was taken for a strike. Rosarena singled on the first pitch sail through. After. Hitting the home run walking twice scoring three runs last night and they caught on quickly the popcorn is the thing in that raised dugout. Eat popcorn Homer. See that's the pitch that's what no one has been able to be uh, do even going all the way back to the postseason no one has made him feel uncomfortable on the inside part of the plate. This is a perfect pitch there's nothing he can do with it. OK now the danger is you pull that pitch over the middle and there's a lot he can do with it but that now keeps him a little less confident. That you're not going to be able to come back in the plate. It might even move him off the plate a little bit. It's been so comfy in these two games and boy it does the trick doesn't it. There's no doubt. I mean and that's the, the that's the idea of pitching. When you can make a guy feel uncomfortable when he has been dominating at this time of the year and maybe let's say your team. You have to get the ball in the area that he does not have a chance for success and then what you get is a little less commitment. The butt goes back to the out <laughs> the other dugout and there goes the bat. And there goes Rosarena, two up and two down in this inning for Hauk. Wander Franco. Not nearly as good from this side of the plate. Switch hitter. Singled and scored against Sale. And is now three for five in this series. 20 years old out of the Dominican goes after the first pitch and lofts it foul. When we talk about this Rays team, but people talking about how they're not fun to watch, they're not exciting, no chemistry, or no, no personality. Then you didn't watch last night's game. You haven't watched Wander Franco and Randy Rosarain at the top of this order. It's not a team that just matches up and puts up zeros with the pitching and then does enough on offense. No, they are dynamic and fun to watch. This guy's right in the center of that already. At 80 games into his big league career. Bangs a liner to left at Verdugo. Hauk does his job quickly. A seven pitch scoreless second.
Welcome back to the 2021 American League Divisional Series presented by Goodsam. Boston trailing this one 5-2 as they come to bat here in the third inning. And Shane Boz goes back to work against Rafael Devers. 3-4-5 and five coming up here for the Red Sox. Strikeout the first time for Devers who again had that awkward swing with the bottom hand came off of the bat. I'm watching you know for the Rays I'm thinking all right I got to keep the fastball up down might give him a chance up doesn't look like he's getting to it. It's a rare non fastball to him there. On a 2 0 pitch. There is that high fastball and the same looking swing. Yeah, it just based on what we've been seeing, all right, you know, this is where your eyes change your scouting report. If the scouting report tells you XYZ and you see this, you change on the fly. And I don't know how many, I mean, young pitchers would be able to see this. They'd have to be told, you know, all right, we're seeing something different from the dugout. But when you can't keep that bottom hand, that bottom hand does everything to get on top of the baseball. So now the only way he can get to the baseball looks like it's going to be down. Now they go down and he fouls it off two and two. And he at least had a fighting chance, right, on that pitch. Now well, it's a bummer to see him this way because this is one of the best hitters in the league when he's right. Didn't have J.D. Martinez in game one. They haven't had Rafael Devers pull. It appears in either of these games. Two balls, two strikes as Devers leads off the third inning. And drives this ball to center field, sending Kiermaier back with a lead and a grab. Devers caught up to it, but so did Kevin Kiermeyer. That's what he does. I'm going to tell you something right now. This is an unbelievable catch live. He goes at this wall in the kind of that angle, leaps, catches, and I mean that's a double or triple. Kiermeyer in this ballpark, that's where all the distance is. The gaps to center field are a lot bigger. He loves playing defense. That's why he's in the lineup, even though he's not a great offensive player. Three time Gold Glove winner. Shows off a little bit of that right there to take extra bases away from Devers. One away, third inning. Here is Xander Bogarts. Let's go. One ball, no strikes. Well, at least encouraging for the Red Sox to see him catch up to one. And try well, yeah, to if that. it's middle to down in the zone, no. he, he should be able to do that. But if it gets up at all, we haven't seen him make any contact on that pitch just based on what he's dealing with. That swing looked like his two home runs Sunday in D.C. 2 0. Bogart started the scoring in this game with an opposite field base hit in the first inning. Three for five in this series. Two all pitch. Bogarts takes a strike. Yeah. Nobody's ever entered their first postseason start with less big league experience than Shane Boz. The only guy that had this number of starts, three of them before making his first postseason start, another Ray, Matt Moore. The division series in 2011. Fired seven shutout innings in that game. He's definitely out of balance with his mechanics tonight, and that's just normal. I mean, you would expect a little bit of some unease with what we just talked about and his few starts of experience. Two and two. 
make sure to grab your front row seat to an historic heavyweight championship trilogy between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. It all goes down tomorrow night, 9 Eastern, live on pay-per-view. You can buy it now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. No chance they're going to have on playing in my flight up to Boston while I I don't want to make any promises. I don't want to ask you what airline. Let me uh, dictate my answer. That's a fly ball to left field. Rosarena is going back. He's out of room. It's gone. Xander Bogart's home run, and it's a 5-3 game. Second of the postseason for the All-Star shortstop. This is a classic swing. I mean, this this guy, as shortstops go, probably doesn't get as much pub as he should. The field of shortstops is crowded with young, dynamic greatness. But this guy right here for the Red Sox, Mr. Steady Eddie, and that's going to be it. Sale goes just one. Boz goes just two and a third. He's chased by the Bogarts home run. He's knocked in two of the three Boston runs in this game. Into the Rays bullpen. Into both bullpens here in game two. Dodgers and Giants getting underway on TBS and then an NLDS doubleheader on TBS tomorrow. Game two, Braves, Brewers, and Dodgers, Giants. So I'll be back on FS1 Sunday. Game three between the Astros and the White Sox at yeah. 7.30 Eastern. This is Colin McHugh into the game for Tampa Bay. 34-year-old having a career year out of the bullpen. 155. And he's on for Alex Verdugo. He's quickly ahead of him on 2. Well, one thing he does, he's got a nice little delivery, but he creates spin on every pitch. Cutting action on his fastball, great spin on his breaking ball and slider. And so he creates angles and illusions based on the way the ball spins. And for baseball pitchers, not everybody have the four seam backspin, the two seam sinker. Colin McHugh has a good feel for the art of pitching. And when he was hurt, of course, trying to come back, he's now healthy and the Rays, like they do, come on over. Yeah, <laughs> make a little tweak here, a little tweak there. How do you feel about pitching out of the bullpen full time? 
two and two on Verdugo and uh, you mentioned him working back from an injury he was working back trying to pitch for Boston. Yeah. He was with the Red Sox last season never did pitch for the Red Sox though. After starting his career with Houston. Right handers two two is drilled the right deep it goes Alex Verdugo hits it out and they go back to back. Red Sox right back in the game as Bogarts and Verdugo go back to back here in the third. He gets on the side of that cutter and see how it just spins right there in the zone. Looks like a fastball. And ends up as a souvenir. Red Sox doing the job with two strikes tonight. Both home runs have come on two strike pitches. And it's a 5 4 game. JD Martinez watches one come back to the corner for a strike. It's Alex Verdugo's first career postseason home run. He's driven in two today, he's driven in five. In the three games this postseason will include the wild card game. Martinez slicing a fly ball the other way. And well, Margot will make the catch to go. Well, that just goes to show you what an incredible job the Rays pitching staff did yesterday. And that youngster, uh, the other Shane, quieted this great offense. This offense will not be kept at bay very long. And they're showing their thunder already. And what looks like it's going to be an old fashioned shootout. Nine runs. Where are we in the third? Top three, five, four. So this is the game I always used to play as a starter who was bored 130 games a year, yeah. 128. So when you play the scoreboard game, I think, I don't know if I, right now, 202 area code, two runs in the first, zero in the second, two here in the third. So Boston's dialing up the 202 area code. Right, yeah. And then we're going to see what Tampa Bay. What their area code is going to be in the third inning, based on what they do. And you just guess him. Whoever knows is the winner. Right. Yeah. What do you got on 202? You know. You know I. I should because I played it so much. It's not New York. 212. Who's New York? Let me know if you want a hint. Yeah, I, I do. Boston was there recently. DC. Yeah, DC. And the left center field off of the bat of Renfro. Rosarena comes on, makes the catch, ends the inning. But the Red Sox right in the long ball, right back into game two. Bogarts and Verdugo back to back, 5 4.
Well, it was Bogarts and Verdugo that drove in two in the first inning. They do the same in the third with solo home runs. And suddenly a one run game as Tanner Hout goes back to work to the bottom of the third. Brandon Lau leads it off. First one from Hout. Outside ball one. Yesterday's winning pitcher for the Rays, Shane McClanahan, kind enough to join us. Shane, uh, I read that you were. You were smiling while you were warming up yesterday, looking at the place, feeling the environment, and you had to say, okay, take a breath, calm down. <laughs> what was it like once you actually got out there on the mound in the middle of this whole thing? So I'll be honest with you, I really wasn't sure what I was going to feel, uh, you know, before the game. And I started started laughing and smiling when I was trying to get ready. I'm like, dude, you need to focus. Like, But felt pretty good. Once I got out of there, all the nerves and anxiety went away, and, you know, it's just back to doing what you do. Well, I was amazed by uh, everything leading up to it, and then the game can pre present some surprises. But your mechanics looked as locked in as I've seen you. Did it feel that way? Yeah, I felt uh, felt pretty good overall. Um, you know, spent the week uh, upcoming week. Ooh. Spent the week, uh, you know, working with Snides, really fine tuning everything, just making sure we're in a good spot. You know, going into yesterday. So you you make your debut in the postseason last year in relief and. You told us the other day that, look, it didn't. You made the debut, but it didn't go well, and so that kind of sparked you going into the off season. How different did it feel having that experience under your belt and having 25 starts in the regular season under your belt going into yesterday? Um, I definitely felt more prepared to be honest with you than last year. I, you know, I spent the whole year here. You know, got 25 starts in my belt, and you know, had a little bit of uh, confidence going in yesterday. So I felt pretty good. You guys thrive here at home, and I, and I enjoyed pitching here. I just think anytime you know you're going to pitch, and the weather's not going to be an issue. Is that a big part of pitching here, and the mound, and all that it, it comes with? <laughs> no, you know it, it's it's a good feeling to go to the park every day, knowing it's going to be sunny, uh, 72, and beautiful. So, you know, it, it's I, I don't know why a lot of pitchers don't sign here. To tell you the truth, they're uh, you know there's never going to be any rain delays or. You know, it's always going to be beautiful. Hey, we got a shot here of uh, who's giving you a hard time. Yeah, so don't, Randy's let, let Randy don't, know he's no. not getting away with this. Also, <laughs> how good is the popcorn? Have you had any? I have. I always, yeah, I always kind of get some. Oz, Oz supplies it for us. So, I, I honestly, God, probably once I get done with this conversation, I'm going to go grab some. Well, well, we'll let you go do that. We don't want to keep you from the popcorn, Shane. Congratulations on a great outing yesterday, and thanks for spending a minute with us. Oh, cool. Thank Boom. you guys so much. That is strike three for the back door on Lau for the first out of the third inning. Lau was getting ready to take the shin guard off and walk in a different place. Unfortunately, he had to walk back to the dugout for strike three call. So that is four up, four down for Tanner Houck. You know, the mood of the game keeps shifting, doesn't it? Each team's responded uh, so far. I mean, first inning, two, and then Rays come back, throw up a couple zeros in the second, and see if the Rays can come back with the answer to the Red Sox top of the third. Nelson Cruz fouls off the first pitch. Had a key walk in the first inning before the Jordan Luplo grand slam against Chris Sale. So Sale goes just one. Hauk has retired all four that he's faced. Israel goes from uh, eating up some innings, trying to keep him within striking distance. To my goodness, it's a one-run game, and a chance to play a serious role here in Game Two. He's ahead, 0-2. Yeah, that came close to us. It did. Were really you ready? Ready? I really wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I guess you were ready then. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's hit a ton of home runs in his career. Most of them in the strike zone, and you got to get it ball down. That's where the outs are. And he, he just covers and crushes the middle of the strike zone to the top part of the strike zone. And an 0-2 hole this time and strikes out on a filthy slider from Hauk who's retired all five that he's faced. That's what I was talking about. This guy's going to be really good for, and he already is with the Red Sox, but his feel for pitching. Even though he's pitching out of the stretch, I selfishly wish he'd pitch out of the windup and use that unique delivery and crossfire, but he's doing just fine right now with the ability to, to take care of right handed hitters. Because that angle is so difficult of where the right handed hitters are, are picking up the, the, the baseball. 
Two gone, Yandy Diaz. How really is going on right now? Scoreless seventh inning in the wild card game on Tuesday. Final outing of the regular season. Five oh, perfect no. innings on Saturday in Washington. He gets a strike here on Diaz. Back and forth between AAA and the majors. A little bit of IL time earlier this season. Ten and a third out of the bullpen after shifting there late in the year. Gave up three runs in those ten innings. After debuting late last year, very encouraging stuff in that debut. Relentless. Isn't that the same one you got? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, you weren't supposed to see that though. <laughs> <laughs> well, relentless is going to be the key right now for the Red Sox. And crawling back in this great game, and they have put the uh, energy back in their dugout. They came out just smoking in the first inning. Everyone in the dugout realizing they got to win this game. And then the deflation of the bottom of the half of the first inning, and then right back in it. Talked about it last night. John, more than half their wins this year have been comeback wins. Out looking for a one two three third inning and oh. he's got it by striking out the side after three innings in St. Pete five four Tampa Bay. Battle of the bullpens here in game two. It's 5 4, Tampa Bay in front. As we go to the fourth, and Christian Vasquez leads off. Singled on the first pitch that he saw in the second inning. First pitch that he sees here in the fourth, he fouls. G Man Choi into the game at first base. 
Jordan Luplo hits a grand slam and thank you very much. Heads to the bench. That is with the left-handed starter out of the game, and so you upgrade the defense drastically. Going from a guy who's hardly played the position to somebody who's pretty good over there in Troy. No balls, two shots. Well, the Rays didn't play along with the area code game. 500 is not an area code. That's not a thing, huh? No. no. All those towns out there, all those areas. No five zeros. No. McHugh winds and fires, and Vasquez fouls it again. Christian Vasquez not having the same kind of offensive season that he did in 2019 and 2019. He was a monster, one of the most well-rounded players in the league. Really good offensive season last year in the short year. But he's taken a step back to where he was before the breakout 2019 season after changing his swing. He leads off his fourth and strikes out chasing a breaking pitch. It's time for a game break. We check in with Kevin Burkhart. <laughs> nice. Christian Arroyo, who is from 727. Takes strike one. That's a really well pitched game up in Milwaukee at Corbin Burns going candidate for Cy Young six shutout innings and then former Ray Charlie Morton who hadn't given anything up through five before the couple runs on the homer from Tellez. There's a chance that that three game series could score less runs than the game tonight. Yeah. I mean this game could be 10 8 8 7. And there's going to be a lot of tight scoring and. The Braves and Brewers series. Home teams perfect in the postseason, even including the two wild card games. Now six and zero. Oh. One two pitch. Arroyo chases one in the dirt. Zanino picks it and throws down back to back K's for Colin McHugh. Well, T-Mobile covers the most interstate highway miles with 5G, home or away. Stay connected to your team with T-Mobile, the leader in 5G coverage. Top of the order, Kyle Schwarber walked in the first inning, struck out in the second. Schwarber, who had a home run in the wild card game, his seventh in the postseason. It's only one Outside. guy that has hit home runs at a better pace in the postseason all time than Kyle Schwarber, and it's Babe Ruth. Wow. Similar bodies, too. Yeah, they more in shape as well. I could see him pointing. For sure. You know, There's comparisons that. made. Not this is the next Babe Ruth, but you're right. Similar looking yeah. swings. And, oh yeah. Takes one to the back door and it's two and one. So the scout that recommended Kyle Schwarber to the Chicago Cubs and as they say pound to the table draft him with the fourth overall pick in 2014 recommended that they draft him and compared him to John Wayne for his toughness and Babe Ruth for his short left handed swing. He said, Squint your eyes and imagine some grainy film. And you've got Babe. Yeah, yeah and, and you know, plays out of position a little bit when he went out to the outfield, but a good enough athlete. And I really think that knee injury, not only what he did in the World Series, that's just another level, but it delayed his progress and he went into a funk after that. And, He's come out of it and looks healthier. Bounces this one right side. Franco in the shift. 
throws him out. One, two, three, fourth inning for Colin McHugh. Well, fan favorite here in St. Pete, G-Man Choi, ready to make his first at bat of the series, replacing Jordan Luplo at first base in the top of this inning. And leading off the fourth against Tanner Hopp. One ball, no strikes. Choi, 30 years old, out of South Korea. Signed his first pro contract back in 2009 with Seattle as a catcher. Spent six years in the minors before getting a handful of games in the majors with the Angels and the Yankees and the Brewers. And another cast off the Rays got in a trade in 2018. That's yeah. in the corner and it's one and one. Great changeup. Outside fastballs are where most of the strikeouts. If they're going to be a strikeout with this fastball, it's going to be away. Seventy percent of the time, that's where he's going to get the called strikeouts or even the strikeouts that he swings at. So he's looking middle to middle in, and there's a good changeup right there out of Hauk. Way better against right-handed pitching. G-Man Choi is platoon guy. Swings and misses here, and it's one and two. Forty-six of the fifty home runs he's hit in his big league career They've come against righties. One two. Really good pitch right there. You could just dot those pitches away just off the uh, off the zone. You got a backdoor breaking ball, a change up to start, and then another change up just in the outside part. Now 
Changeups these days are 90, 94, 93 miles an hour versus the general changeup of 82 to 85. Another one two pitch. Another foul ball. See, the challenge for a right handed pitcher when a guy's a good low ball hitter but will swing below the zone. Is to make the pitch look enticing come out of your hand and then almost bounce it right. Or take it to the below the strike zone so where he swings over the top so back foot. You, when you hear back foot breaking ball or back foot slider. You're trying to get the ball to almost get to his back foot in the box. Starting it over the middle. Go and Zanino to follow. It's six, seven, and eight come up for the Rays here in the fourth inning. All five of their runs came in the first. Red Sox getting two in the first and two in the third. Two balls, two strikes on G Man Choi. Hop throws on the ground. Well positioned Xander Bogarts. One gone. Well, here's how we got to this point. This is back to back home runs from Bogarts and Alex Verdugo. We've driven all four for the Red Sox in this game, getting them back to within a run after the big swing from Jordan Luplo. And Stackhouse, powered by Google Cloud, takes a look at him going up and getting that pitch out of the zone with two strikes and crushing it. Well, he threw it right where they Vasquez wanted it. And unfortunately, it just became that pitch selection error instead of location because he set up up high and Sent it up high, well into the stands. Strike one on Margot. You know, the Rays get guys that do one or two things very well, and then they deploy them to maximize those skills. Luplo comes out of the game as soon as it shifts to a righty on the mound, but he's in there specifically because he crushes lefties. And what does he do? He crushes a lefty. Yeah. And you really have to have a buy in for that to work right I mean can you imagine hitting a grand slam and then uh, being tapped on the shoulder and said all right thanks for your uh, help today we'll wait for the next opportunity and that's just the system that they have and it seems to be that everybody that's here understands it grasps it and uh, they make the best of it. Ball takes this and it's one and two. But the fan base, I almost feel like the fan base every year is getting to know somebody different. And that, that can be difficult. You, you know, your fans, you want to hold on to players and you want to see them mature and grow. And that's not kind of the model that seems to have worked here. Longoria being about the only one that had the long term deal. So every year is a little bit different, but the results seem to be pretty close to the same. They've used 61 players this year. 41 of those pitchers, both those franchise records. Colin McHugh, who's pitching for the Rays right now, said that, you know, kind of a fun group of misfits. A lot of guys that nobody else wanted. 19 players on this postseason roster were acquired via trades. So they only have five homegrown players out of their 26. One, two. Many of the homegrown guys they use. To get those 19 players acquired in trades. Yeah, well, you know what's not fun? Shares meetings. Because when you do over shares meetings, you got to go for a lot of players yeah. who help contribute to your success. So there's a <laughs> lot of decisions to be made there. He's one of the homegrown guys, the crown jewel homegrown player, Wander Franco. Oh, the one, two to Manuel Margot is swung on and missed, and how keeps on rolling. The two gone here in the fourth and much has been made of the payroll for the Rays. The way they operate is because they have to to be competitive with a budget like this. They found ways to get edges. You know whatever it is that they can find to get a little bit of an edge to overcome. And a lot less than the Red Sox do than the Yankees do. But still three consecutive postseason appearances. Fueled by popcorn and Red Bull this edition. 
Two out, Mike Zanino. Zanino chops one to third. Big bounce, Devers. Three perfect innings from Tanner Howe. It's been kind of a roller coaster ride here in game two. Red Sox struck first, but then the Rays with a five run first inning against Chris Sale to chase him. Red Sox back to within one, back to back home runs from Bogarts and Verdugo. And now Kike Hernandez fouls off the first pitch of the fifth from Colin McHugh. Big inning here for the Red Sox and a uh, big inning for the Rays as far as the game can tilt right here. Right part of the lineup that you want if you're the Red Sox to get the lead back. And the Rays are going to have their bullpen ready to go in case there's traffic on the bases. That's in. One ball, one strike on Hernandez. As a pitcher, you always sense, you know, the, the part of the lineup. Of course, that's who you're facing. But you also sense which inning is a little bit more important from a momentum standpoint. And this game has kind of gone back and forth. And I would think this inning right here for the, for the Red Sox, the hot hitters coming up. Hernandez, Devers, and Bogarts, and then Verdugo. Matt Wisser warming for the second time. Both these teams are going to piece it together tonight after short starts. The cue to Hernandez, 1 2.
watches that one miss count even two and two on a guy who missed 10 days end of August beginning of September that COVID outbreak the Red Sox had he was quarantined in his hotel room for 10 days in Cleveland and for every game would put his full uniform on to watch it. <laughs> Lifts his ball to left on a line and beat Kiki Hernandez has tied the game. Three solo shots in tied at five. It is his ninth career postseason home run. A lot of breaking balls that at bat, and he got one that hung over the middle of the plate, and it was out of here fast. So the Red Sox have come all the way back from down 5-2. Solo shots from Bogarts, Verdugo, and Hernandez. What a valuable piece he's been. And now it's Devers. Strike one. It's a better matchup here for Devers. The velocity won't get him as much. And what? Colin McHugh's trying to do is pitch to the top of that zone with his cutters. But Devers a good breaking ball hitter. With the number one slugging percentage in the majors against non fastballs. Yeah. Rafael Devers. On a 1 1 pitch. Takes outside ball two. This is what the Red Sox have done for a lot of the season. Recent deficits. Couldn't wait around for this one. Two in the third, one in the fifth. Back at square one. Two one. Ball three. Ball four takes a borderline pitch for ball four. The go ahead run reaches here in the fifth. The tying run scores on a home run from Kike Hernandez. Kevin Cash comes out. He's going to make a change. Third home run of the game for the Red Sox. This one comes from Kike Hernandez. Most significant role of his career here in his first season with Boston. Wanted to go somewhere where he could play every day. Gotten that chance and taken full advantage. He's got the Red Sox right back into a tie game. Pitching change here in the fifth.
homers all season a career year during the regular season but he gives up two tonight. And it's tied at five as Matt Whistler comes on for Xander Bogarts. Fastballs and sliders, mainly sliders. Bogarts doesn't swing very often at the first pitch. Doesn't hear, takes a strike. Well, there's some questions, John, about Whistler's ability to, to be ready for the postseason. I've been dealing with a sore finger for quite a while. Came off of the injured list, a couple of appearances down the stretch. It was a last minute decision to carry him. Slider man. He definitely likes throwing it. And if you have that problem with your finger, that is the pitch that's going to affect it on the most. Throws it 90 percent of the time. It's another thing these Rays do. They get these relievers and they say, "Take what you're good at and do it more." Yeah. After the homer for Hernandez to lead off this inning, walk for Devers. No one to Bogarts. Drops low. It's Bogarts to hit the first of these three home runs for Boston. Two for two tonight, above 400 on the year against Tampa Bay. They try to keep the ball away and keep it from being up or inside. That's where he crushes. Boy, it's both those things, wasn't wow. it? And he got away with it. This one backed up, and it was almost in the sweet zone. He just got underneath the pitch. You could see. Four off of Whistler. JD Martinez do up two hitters from now. Last bit of cramming. One two pitch. Up and in again. This time he didn't miss it. Bangs nope. a base hit in the left field. That's amazing. I mean, the league average with two strikes is 167. He hits about almost 230. But the two areas again that he loves the baseball. You could tell he was frustrated with missing that first one, but he wasn't going to miss the second one. I mean, that's just a ball that he was able to get on top of. And so far, right now, the breaking ball has not been coming out of his hand and turning the corner. Here is the pitching coach, Kyle Snyder, and here is a quick word from Evan Williams Bourbon. Get ready for the next pitch with Evan Williams Bourbon done right. For this Red Sox offense has come to life. It's kind of been the thing throughout the year. They'll have nights where they look. Incredible like this Those nights where they go silent like last night. They got shut out even though they had nine singles They're Riding the long ball to this five five time one of those home runs came from Alex Verdugo who comes up here And he has looked locked in. I mean And his approach has Been real quiet If you're a pitcher and I'm sure the scouting report right there is trying to trying to find a way to get him to hit the ball on the ground which he will he hit the ball on the ground but you better make a great pitch for him to do that. His outs are down low. Two on nobody out tie game in the fifth for Dugo lines the ball to right center field Margot's on the move to get there. Usually advancing to third is Devers. Verdugo continues to look locked in. Uh, go able to make the play. I mean, it probably looks like a beach ball to him right now. I mean, that was a great swing, even though the result didn't get a hit for Verdugo. He moves to runner over in scoring position, and some of the best at getting RBIs is at the plate. 
J.D. Martinez in the lineup for the first time this postseason tonight. He's gone one for two. It has been a bounce back year for him after a nightmare short season, worst year of his career. One of the top hitters in baseball. First and third one gone, and he takes an off-speed yeah. pitch for a strike. See, he hasn't thrown one at that in the attended area. That's danger right now. That's danger for the Rays, a danger for Whistler. He's got to get the ball on the outside part of the plate. He's got to get out in front. You mentioned the injury and wonder if it's bothering him a little bit. But to reach out and throw the breaking ball and slider that he can, this is the only chance he has to get Martinez. He, you know he wants to get it on the ground. He can't run. So if he can get him reaching in that left side of the box that you're looking at, he's got a chance to get that 6-4-3. Right there. Perfect. Yeah. And you just tell yourself, I don't have to make a better pitch, but I've got to finish the pitch in whatever way I can. He's talking to himself right now. You see how it comes out of his fingers. That's a better breaking ball. That's the best one he's thrown this inning because the other ones are backing up, and that's a bad recipe. With this man looming at the plate. Devers at third, Bogarts at first, J.D. Martinez on an 0-2 pitch. Takes it low. And again, wasn't anywhere close no. to the target. When it pops out of a pitcher's hand, that's never good. Because when you pop out of a hand, it's usually a breaking ball that can pop out of the hand. This one, see, it gets on the side, and now that spin is not taking it to the right direction of the plate. Got to be on top of the pitch, and you got to finish it out in front. And let the spin take it away from the right hand hitter. One two pitch. Ball, Go ball. and take that time. Now the downside of seeing and throwing so many breaking ball to a great hitter. He's seen the break now. He recognizes the break and he's seen three or four or five and the more you see the better chances it gets for J.D. Martinez to stay back and hit that ball in the desired effort and he's trying to lift it in the air of course. Red Sox have three homers tonight, all three with two strikes. Two strike pitch here. He is lifted to straightaway center field. Kiermeyer back at the wall. It's gone! Another two strike bomb! Red Sox take the lead! Alex Cora told him it doesn't matter how bad the ankle hurts. If you hit it out, you can take your time around in the bases with a go-ahead three-run shot. He was looking for one up. He got it. He knew that's at least the, the go-ahead run, but it had brought in two more. He spit on the ones that were off the plate down, and none of those sliders, with the exception of one, did Whistler throw the way he wanted to. To a great hitter, you just can't get away with that. Renfro a little bit off balance fouls it back four home runs for the Boston Red Sox tonight after they failed to get an extra base hit in game one. And they've come from the guys that you expect to hit them. Hernandez, Bogarts, Verdugo, and now J.D. Martinez. That chase there on two. That's what the doctor ordered for the Red Sox. I mean, Hauk has done an unbelievable job to keep them in this game. There's still a lot of baseball to be played, but the Red Sox hitting shoes are on tonight. Got him here. Red throws out number two. Well, tonight we're Tampa Bay. John gets five in the first inning against Chris Sale. Boston sitting there thinking, my gosh, maybe it's just not our year, but here they come. But you know what? Because of that man right there, Alex Cora, and the way that he's led his team this year, I mean, it's kind of followed the track of the year. Gets swept by Baltimore to start. Oh, here comes the, you know, all the paper, all the headlines. Then they get out to that great lead, lose the lead, and then they're outside looking in for the playoffs. Really all the way possibly to the last day rally get in beat the Yankees. So there's no way that this series was going to go. 
like the first game just where there's no competitive fight this this team's too good offensively and has shown it tonight Christian Vasquez grounds one to third Diaz circles around it and ends the inning Boston brings its big bats to game two two more home runs it was Hernandez to lead off the inning the third solo shot of the night and then a three run home run to break the tie from J.D. Martinez. In the fifth inning against Matt Whistler, what a game this has been. It's 8 5 to the bottom of the fifth. Long way to go. Tanner Hauk, though, has been untouchable. 9 1 and 2 for the Rays coming up. And there's ball one. He's throwing strikes. He's got a great changeup working that, that acting like a split, and he's throwing enough breaking balls to keep these hitters off balance. But much like the Red Sox, this, this part of the lineup has an opportunity to cut back into the lead if they do their thing. When they turn this to the top of the order. We go two and zero. Oh. Hauk, by the way, over his last three outings, has now thrown a perfect game. Five perfect innings on Saturday. Perfect inning in the wild card game, and nine up, nine down here in relief of Chris Sale. That's getting it done. I don't know about what every reliever does, but to play a game like that in your mind of just one batter at a time, and at the end of the day, after six or seven outings, for most relievers, you can put together that kind of. That stretch. 2 0 pitch. Kiermeyer flies it down the line to left. Long run for Verdugo. A lot of room over there, and he makes the grab. Top of the order, Randy Rosarena borrowed some boots from a teammate last year. They became the Magic postseason boots. He bought a pair of his own this year. And uh, you got to keep wearing them. They worked last night. The boots worked all last postseason. Yeah, whatever he's doing, keep it up. Watch this. 
Oh, yeah. You can't miss. <laughs> well, Hal pitched him about as good as anybody who's pitched this young man. And he got that fastball inside. Struck him out back in the second. Fastball yeah. pinpoint strike one. Over the nine and a third perfect innings for Hauk. He's got 15 strikeouts, including that one to a Rosarena. Here's his 0 1. Outside. Give it away. He could sweep a breaking ball right now if he wanted. I mean, he's got his eyes looking outside on the corner. Painted one, just missed the other. An aggressive style hitter. Let's see what they go with. Yep. You've seen a game or two, of John Smoltz, haven't you? I missed that part, you know. I missed the part of trying to dissect what a hitter's good at. And where that last pitch is is so key. Where the last pitch is, not necessarily pitch selection always, but where the pitch is and where you get the hitter to look out over the plate. He could bust him in right now if he wanted to. Having him lean out over the plate or just keep going back out. Sweeps another one. Warm burner to third. And Devers gets a little help by Schwarber on the back end, playing just his 10th career game at first base. Time for the player resume, sponsored by Indeed. Entering the day, here are the postseason numbers for as Joe Castiglione, fantastic uh, Red Sox radio man, dubbed last night the new Mr. October. I'm telling you, man, that is. You would be fine with that as a career in the postseason. Yeah. A career. Like you'd be talked talk, talk about as an incredible career, postseason player. But if you dive into it and you go, what? It's not even two years? Wait, he's a rookie? Two gone. Franco. It's in. Ball one. The Rays trailed this game 2 0 after a half inning tonight. Probably got five runs in the bottom of the first. Now they trail by three, facing a guy who is locked in. Two balls, no strikes. Yeah, and what you're looking for if you're Alex Cora and the pitching coach, you're just seeing, okay, is there any signs that show me he's getting out of his mechanics or leaking at all? And I haven't seen it. And so you ride him as long as he looks comfortable and he doesn't get out of, of the release point that he's currently in. And Dave Bush, I'm sure, has got his eyes all locked in. To that and other things. First round pick 2017. Hawks 2-0. Swing and a miss. He moved a mile. There are actually some teams that look at numbers coming out of spin rate to determine what they see or don't. And I, and I think that's a dangerous way to go. There's some evidence and 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 quality in doing that but your eyes can be very important at this time of the year and if a guy is having one of those games you just let him rock two one offering smacked up the middle and beats the defense they sit into center field for Wander Franco first base runner of the game for the Rays since the grand slam from Luke Lowe in the first. The postseason continues tonight. Dodgers and Giants just about ready to get underway on TBS and then a doubleheader on TBS tomorrow. Game two of both division series in the National League. The Dodgers and Giants, the Braves and Brewers will be back on FS1 Sunday. Game three between the Astros and the White Sox. As the Astros go for the sweep, uh, the sell side of Chicago. I'm not saying I'd be a great manager. I'd love the challenge, but. I also would have a rule that I'm not going to make a decision that makes the other team happy. And what I mean by that is if I've got a guy that's giving up soft contact and, and dominating, I'm not taking him out to make them feel better about whoever I bring in. And whoever I bring in might be awesome too. But there's something to be said about being in rhythm and having a certain team's number or hitting your mark. And it happens. I've seen it too much in the games. Like, thank you. You took him out. Thank you. We couldn't touch him. Ask Blake Snell. Couldn't touch you. Thank you for the next guy. Game six of the World Series last year. Snell leaves. Two batters later, the Dodgers take the lead. 
win the game, win the series. Here's Lau with a ground ball into the defense. Short right field, Arroyo throws him out. Four scoreless innings from Tanner Houck. The offense has found its footing at the same time. Red Sox have hit four home runs matching a franchise postseason record as Christian Arroyo sends the first pitch that David Robertson throws in the year to right for Manuel Marco. One pitch, one out for Robertson. This is scored a inning in last night's game. Well, that's what the Red Sox had to do, and they came out of the gate strong and then kind of had the air take out of them in the bottom of the first, but because of how can the job he's done, it's rejuvenated this club, and they know how important this game is. They know the elements are going to be much different in Boston. The crowd, the level of noise, and the weather. Yeah, that right, too. Pretty consistent weather inside here. Kyle Schwarber. Strike one. Yeah, the other thing, and this just goes back to your point at the start of the series, a five game series, everything is shifting so quickly. Red Sox trail this game 5 2. You know, they give up five runs with Chris Sale. You're looking at a 2 0 deficit, but then you rally, and now you're saying, okay, we're going to go up to Boston 1 1 potentially. Nathan Avaldi on the mound, who has shut Tampa Bay down twice. Very quickly, this thing swings in the entire opposite direction. No, it does. These, these, and playing in enough of them, I'm telling you, uh, you just have to avoid those kind of mind monsters in a best of five because it does shift and quickly changes the narrative. Based on one game should never be the case, especially in a best of seven. You can kind of rally and take solace that the series is not over by any stretch of imagination in two games. But in two games in a best of five, you start doing the what ifs. How many teams have come back from an 0-2 and this, this, and that. Every team in baseball is one three in a row. 
Even the worst teams in baseball, I think, have won three in a row. One two to Schwarber. He oh, no. tries to lay off, but he goes around and a strikeout for Robertson. Two gone in the six. Let's check in with Kenny. Well, one thing that's interesting here, guys, as this series develops, yes, Nathan Evaldi will pitch game three, but who will pitch game four? We've seen in games one and two, Pavetta and Tana Houck be very, very good. And this could change the Red Sox thinking going forward. John, I'm wondering how you see this. You could go with Eduardo Rodriguez on three days rest, Pavetta on three days rest off 73 pitches. Maybe you bring Chris Sale back. It's a lot to think about as they go forward, but keep in mind, Alex Cora in the postseason is one of the most aggressive handlers of pitching that there is. Kika Hernandez, bases empty, two away. And with that oh, point, no. Kenny John, he's going to pick one of those guys to start game four if it gets there, but there's a good chance the other two are involved in it eventually. Yeah, there won't be any more starters uh, other than Navaldi going probably five innings for the Red Sox this way forward. And I think that will answer kind of how he chooses to use either one of those combinations. Now the question that I have is how many more innings can Hauk pitch and how much does it knock him out of the rest of the season. But that doesn't matter right now because this game matters more to the Red Sox on winning it. So you throw everything out the window and you let Hauk go as far as he can till he shows any kind of fault. Figure out the rest of the stuff. Absolutely. Oh well Hauk has thrown 90 pitches twice this season again he's a converted starter. He's only thrown 47 so far tonight. Yeah, I mean, I've seen and we've seen in the postseason unconventional ways to finish a game and in clutch World Series games to boot. So this falls in that category. That's why, if you want to run a system to through whatever theory you want in 162, great. But throw that system out the window when the postseason comes. That's a good formula for 162. But the 162 formula doesn't work for best of fives or best of sevens. I'm just telling you, it doesn't. And so to live by that 162 formula in the one or two or three games in a postseason, I think you're making a little bit of a mistake. Four count. Because you've got all that information for 162. But I've always said, what if there's an outlier game in a game two of a postseason that doesn't have the luxury to see four more starts of that guy? You've got to treat that game as, as its own. You can't lop it into the 162 version of the statistics you want to go by. Everything magnified this time of year. Hernandez hammers this ball to the gap in left center field and off the wall. Almost hits his second home run of the night. He'll settle with a double. His third extra base hit. Tell you what, these Red Sox handle the inside part of the plate and the top of the zone. They are lethal when you make a mistake up. Doesn't matter if you're 5 10 or 6 4, they're crushing the pitches that are out over the plate. Zero extra base hits last night, six of them tonight. Three from him. 8-5 game, two gone, Rafael Devers. Again, another good matchup for Devers. See that ball down. You don't want to see another one down if you're Robinson. This ball is in the kind of Bermuda triangle of center field up there where the two walls come together in just about a foot. They went down with it. Taken for a ball. It's one and one. So it's Evaldi for the Red Sox Sunday. It's another rookie, Drew Rasmussen, for the Rays. Converted reliever. On one one, Devers takes a high ball two. No, for the Rays, this is the batter of the game. 
This is the batter that determines if you got a chance to come back. And the reason if you don't get him, you're in the meat of a hot Bogarts, a hot Verdugo. They just keep coming with J.D. Martinez behind him. Two one. Three and one. Crash back to the phone. Nobody warming yet in that bullpen. Fernandez in second with two gone. Three one pitch. Count is full. I got to give Devers credit. I mean, whatever's going on, you know, he's battling, and he's the, he don't miss, he just doesn't miss those pitches, right? And it's just this time of the year, he's doing what he can do, and everybody knows it, right? When you when you're playing at this level, I'm going to ask you questions, but you go out there and post up and give everything you got. Payoff pitch. Ball four, second walk for Rafael Devers. That's the other thing they didn't do it all last night. Zero walks to three of them today. That's Michael Waka. Well, Robertson's faced Bogarts a ton. So he knows and seen Bogarts at his best. Well, looks like starting to see Bogarts at his best again here. Six for nine with two home runs so far in the postseason. It's just so quiet at the plate. Everything looks like it's slow motion. And then strike one. A guy that debuted in 2013 was a young guy on that World Series team, longest tenured Red Sox at this point. He's gone from being overshadowed as the young guy on the same team as Poppy and Pedroia, uh, Victorino, and Ellsbury at that point was a star. Mookie Betts makes his debut the next season. The first round picks, big names in Bradley and Benintendi. And now he's the guy, but still underappreciated across the sport. This is one of the best players in the American League. It really is. He slugs too on fastballs. You got to get him out down. You saw that pitch and swing and miss. It almost hit him. The way he's swinging, he's glad it didn't. Yeah, most of the times you're yelling in the dugout, we got ice. <laughs> uh, there you're like, get out of the way because we want you to swing. Bogarts who is three for three. Gets under this one. Foul ground. Choi has it. That does it for the Red Sox in the six. They strand a pair. And it remains a three-run game.
Predict which players will stack the most total bases each day during the postseason. Compete to win 20 grand. Enter MLB Chase presented by Niccolo Ultra at MLB.com slash base chase. See official rules for details. 8 6 Boston. Just one base runner against Tanner Houck through four scoreless innings. He delivers to Nelson Cruz, ball one. Cruz walked in the first inning, came in to score on the Luplo Grand Slam. Rays haven't scored since. Houck becoming one of the central figures of this game in this series for Boston. The rookie falls behind 2 0. I'll tell you something. Cruz has one of the prettiest swings in baseball. It's the reason why at his age he can still hit for power and average. It's because he keeps the bat in the zone longer than most. Rarely do you see him swing off balance or reach way off the plate. He's looking for a pitch middle in to drive and middle down. Ooh, just like that. A little late because of the fastball gets by him, but that kind of swing is usually what produces all that kind of power. He is pretty short and quick to the ball, even though he was a little late right there. On this 2 1 from Howard. Late again. He's been late more over the last month or two since the trade. He normally, like you said, crushes fastballs, but has not been the same hitter since coming here. Cruz leading off the sixth, lifting this ball down the line. It's hooking towards the foul pole. And Verdugo leading and catching. What a play by Alex Verdugo. That's two great catches by outfielders. Kiermaier already showed what he can do in this short porch and just outside the Rays fan there. Oh, tip of the hat. That was an outstanding play to keep his momentum from going over the wall. Pretty athletic. And to avoid the uh, the other glove, reach around it. And put Cruz away for the first out here in the sixth inning. Hulk at 52 pitches as he gets ready to face Yandy Diaz. And this has kind of been the thing. Can he keep it going deep into outings? After 50 pitches, opponents are hitting well above 300. They've hardly let him face a lineup a third time because he's gotten crushed any time that he has. And there is starting to uh, be some stirring down in that Red Sox bullpen. As he gets near the end of facing this lineup a second time. Struck Diaz out his first time. Drives on the other way here. Not deep though. That's Renfro. That's out number two. Well, I have a theory on that, and that theory is not adhered to because they just want to go by the numbers. They just don't give you enough chances to prove one way or another. So if you're conditioned to do one thing and you don't get an opportunity to condition for something else, you're going to fall, fall prey to that number all the time. You give a you give a young man a 15 to 20 starts, you'll know exactly what you need to know about him. But you only give him three to five and you go off those numbers, he'll never have a chance to learn how to get through. When he's a little tired and a little off. So those numbers are king right now, and that's just kind of the way uh, baseball is operating. So the elite will over, override that, but the others just aren't given the chance to try to learn how to be more effective third time through. How do you show you can do it without being given the chance to do it? G Man Choi. Well, the one thing is, if you're going to show every hitter in the first two innings what you got, you're not going to get them out the third time. And they're, they don't, they're all right with that. Just, the philosophy of give me what you got empty the tank and then I'll get a next guy to do that has been working and you can piecemeal that together. But if you want to develop and, and promote a stud starter you can't approach it that way and you got to give him the chance to learn how to navigate. Troy the other way left center field back towards the wall. G man Troy with a home run. Did he reach over is this fan interference. As it stands, a solo shot that makes it 8 6. I, I honestly think this is going to get called back. Just from my live eye of what I saw, this is going to be a double.
It's close. He reaches over, and they're gonna. Yeah, I think it's good. It might be. You're right. It's and it's a great catch. The follow through is what got me live. But how about Choi in the first base production of the Rays if this stands? Uh, they got all got five RBIs, right? They do. Grand slam from Luke Lowe. He leaves. Choi comes in. He homers. Yeah, I did see the glove come down, and from our vantage point here in the booth, it looked like he drug it down, but this may stand because he caught it yep. over the yellow line. Should be a pretty quick review. As she meant, Choi hits his fourth postseason home run. A part time role. We've had six home runs in this game combined. Four of them from Boston, now two of them from Tampa Bay. Poor guy, just wants to have his moment. So what have I done? I think you're going to be all right. I think he's going to skate on this one. Yeah. Home run. G Man Choi, 8 6 game. Still a lot of game to be played. He's saying, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and here's Margot. We don't want to be uh, what is it and cheers where everybody knows your name song part of that. All oh, right. Yeah. He didn't want. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't want to be that guy where everybody knew his name. Good reference. You're ahead of the Boston. Now. So the first blemish against Tanner Houck and a breaking pitch misses to Margot. So a little bit of damage that comes after that 50th pitch mark. First hit that he's allowed by the way. In 11 innings. He's been awesome. Our first run, beg your pardon. Only the second hit, though. Yeah. One ball, one strike. That's, one ball, two strike. That's the pitch that's been nasty. And I mean the bottom drops out of it after you're looking at fastball and sliders this thing acts like a split finger fastball and it just dives into a righty and that's the pitch you can use and get used to using against a lot of left handed hitters. If the Red Sox come and win this game it's because of the man on the mound gave him a chance. Our goal is off two and two. And really kind of reset the bullpen. Because they could have used them. They could have used three people already. Uh huh. And now they'll still be fresh for the last three innings. Margot with a back spinning fly ball to center field for Kike Hernandez. That's the inning. But the Rays get their first run since the first inning. G Man Choi. Boy, the sixth spot has been the magic one. First base has been the productive one.
Grays fans love giving him something to roar about here in the six with a solo shot and it's an eight six game as Alex Verdugo comes to the plate to lead off the seventh. RBI single and a home run tonight for Verdugo one of the four for Boston. Michael Waka, the new pitcher for Tampa Bay. Verdugo shoots the first pitch on the ground. Jump throw, Superman try, but an infield hit for Verdugo to open the inning. Juan Franco gave it his all, but Verdugo reaches. Playing in a shift. Did everything he could. Verdugo can run. Sixth hit in three games in the postseason for Verdugo. He's on. Here's J.D. Martinez, who has the biggest swing in a game full of big swings. See, I don't like that right side of the infield for J.D. Up down. I, I just think the way that he's trying to hit. Obviously, he's trying to hit the ball in the air, right? Keep it off the ground so he doesn't have to run for a double play. But you've given him the freedom of hitting that hole right there. And he's the kind of hitter with the kind of back control where he can take it if he wants it, especially with the condition of his ankle. There That's what is. he does. I, I just I didn't like it. And regular season, he may not have that approach over time, but in the postseason, it's just too easy for a guy like him. And the way that Walker throws over the top. It's like a DB playing back, playing prevent defense, and yeah. you take the underneath throw. Yeah. Two on, nobody out against Waka, who's been exceptional down the stretch for Tampa Bay. Been a busy day for Kyle Snyder. This game is featured on the free to play Fox Bet Super 6 app. One of the questions in tonight's contest which team will have the most hits? How many will they have? Rays or Red Sox double in the Rays up 13 to 6. I'll tell you something, him in the lineup means the difference to this team. And, and I know it's an overstatement, but if he never swung the bat in the lineup tonight, it was definitely a different feeling if you got the lineup card and the pitcher goes, okay, JD Martinez is batting sixth. Uh, I don't think I like that. And he's produced right when they needed him. Lineup that didn't come out until a little more than an hour before first pitch, but he was holding their breath. Red Sox fans crossing their fingers, hoping to see his name. He was in there and he was delivered three hits a home run three driven in and at this point you just encourage him to be smart you get thrown out on a base so what right I mean we need your bat in the lineup we don't need your legs right now especially with the lead one ball one strike on Renfro Michael Waka, first season in Tampa Bay. He had a six ERA in late August, but then he ditched his cutter. He went to pretty much his fastball changeup, occasional curveball, took off. Sub three ERA over the final month. Fastball in there for a strike one and two. Yeah, another one of those relievers who has a different release point that we showed you earlier in the broadcast yesterday. It's just. It's a different angle. It's straight over the top, and that changeup is coming off the fastball. So he's trying to pull the string on hitters who are trying to hit his fastball and then to get the changeup. Changeups historically have been the best pitch for him. Yes. He's a former NLCS MVP as a 21 year old. The Cardinals in 2013 when he beat Clayton Kershaw twice. Pitch in the postseason in 13 and 14 and 15 was a young postseason veteran already. First appearance since 2015 in the postseason here. Goes full on Renfro. Back to back base hits to open the inning. Red Sox trying to get the run back. Trying to even the series at a game piece as the scene shifts to Fenway Park on Sunday. When he had that year when he was 21, he would throw a 3 2 changeup. 
I don't know if that's the confidence he has right now in the 3-2 changeup with runners on and nobody out. Fastball chopped to short. There's one and two. Six four three double play two gone. Well fastball down and it chops an easy double play as far as the fielding end of it just make the rate toss and then two big outs. So up to Vasquez with two gone. Verdugo at third now. Red Sox catcher one for three tonight. The way this game has gone, every run feels so important. I have the feeling we haven't seen the last of it. I thought 10 8. You know, I thought that might be the final score of the way we were going, and it's heading that way. It's 8 yeah. 6. They lasted just one inning. Boz only a couple. Vasquez punches a bouncing ball by first to give the Red Sox another run. Verdugo in to score, and it's 9 6. To me, it's just refreshing to see hitters taking what the other team has given them. And sometimes you get a lucky and sling, swing late. But he was trying to go that way. Maybe not past the first baseman, but between the first baseman and second baseman where they were positioned. And you get rewarded when you do the little things. And the Red Sox have done all of that so far tonight in this game. Christian Vasquez, who had the disappointment of not starting the wild card game, even though that's kind of become a thing with Blowecki, Kench, and Ivaldi. He's back with a two hit night here in game two and drives in a run. There's a reason the shift works. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but there's also a reason why guys aren't our guys are making the shift work. Arroyo. Change up, strike one. Tell me more. You well, when you have a one style approach in the regular season, it's not as important in theory because every game you're playing a game every day and so over not over time that shifts going to gobble up everybody that hits on the ground because everyone's trying to do the same thing trying to pull trying to hit homers trying to get it over the fence. Well it's bonded in the air caught by Zunino. It's no different than in like the NBA you don't just start playing defense in the postseason so here take what they give you.
Christian Vasquez knocks in the ninth run of the night for Boston. 9 6, bottom seven. Brian Brazier comes up. Mike Zanino fouls off first pitch. Brazier got hot for him at the right time. He had a lot of games, 13 games, but you see the ERA. And they used him down the stretch, and they're going to use him as long as they're in the postseason. Good fastball and good slider. Had a really bad calf injury, and then his return was slowed by a concussion. Didn't make his season debut until September 3rd. We talk about them riding him down the stretch. There was one point where he pitched in four consecutive games. Red Sox needing to be good down the stretch to get into the postseason. This one one is blown by him one and two. So the game is finished for Tanner Houck. And what a night it was. Takes over for Chris Sale after one inning. He goes five. He gives up just the solo home run. I hope for his sake he never sees the bullpen again next year. You know, I mean, this is what I, when I see a young man and I see an arm and I see the potential that he could have, I, I get it. I mean, there's valuable innings out of the pen too, but that's kind of what they look like as a starter, and that's hopefully what he's profiled as, uh, especially next year for the Red Sox. Zanino down on strikes, one gone in the seventh. Get your game on at MLBShop.com. Authentic on-field caps, tees, hoodies, and more. Get all your postseason gear. Wear what the champs wear at the official source, MLBShop.com. Raise one game, one five nothing. Led this game five two. But the Red Sox crushing four home runs to take a nine six lead. Kevin Kiermaier over two tonight. Great defensive play earlier though. KK as they call him swings and misses. I'll give you a perfect example of kind of getting a little bit lucky for me. But what the Brewers did three years ago to kind of get where they went in the postseason and almost beating the Dodgers they had four starters in the pen. Guess what those starters are doing now. They're starting uh -huh. and it's the reason that the Brewers are so good. One of those starters went tonight and Burns and then you got Woodruff and you got Peralta so I get it there's a couple ways to skin it but long term you risk a little bit more of not developing that guy in his third and fourth pitch by putting him in the innings of although be it important innings in the bullpen but then you de-develop his greatness in my opinion so the Brewers are benefiting from those three young men surviving it pitching in the pen and now becoming dominant starters. Rangers 0 2 gets him swinging. Two up, two down, and a couple K's. And it's hard, right? Because the situation at the time, 2018, Milwaukee needed those guys to be in that role. Boston has needed Hauk in that role down the stretch. You just hope, like you said, that it doesn't stunt their development too much. Worse yet, you hope it. Doesn't lead to any kind of injuries. Yeah, the only the only thing that's yet to be determined, and I, I think we have all kinds of numbers for everything, is that they just don't spend enough time in the minor leagues preparing them to do what they want them to do. They bring them up quicker because their arms are so good. A Rosarena strike one. So by bringing them up quicker, you have limits on innings, and you're limiting all their innings. So that best way to limit their innings is where in the pen. So I think the shift will start happening, and I think you'll start seeing more guys. Kind of prepare to have a 190 to 200 innings type seasons because it's hard to do that year in and year out. I know pitching and arms are are unbelievable and they're finding lots of them, but the injury rate's pretty high too. Higher than ever this year. And of course, a lot goes into that 60 game season last year, following that up. But to me, that's that's yeah. a byproduct of maximize 
maximum maximum effort. Because last year, if you think about it, last year should have been a break for a lot of guys. And should have been fresher coming in this year. But when you max effort, max velocity, everything, then the high risk risk injury goes just through the roof. Teams average 18 pitchers on the IL. 18 pitchers a team this year. That's too much. Eight's too much. Count evens two and two on a Rose Arena. Singleton scored in the first inning. He's over two since. Last of the seven, two gone. And a 2 2 pitch coming from Ryan Brazier. He strikes out the side. Fastball by Rosarena through a seven, nine, six Red Sox. Lift of the game, a few of them. Four home runs for the Boston Red Sox. Got back from down 5 2 to lead this game 9 6. Solo shots from Bogarts, Verdugo, Hernandez, and then the three run tie breaking home run from JB Martinez. Top of the order, and Kyle Schwarber yeah. taking strike one from Michael Waka. I wonder how many times a team loses when they get five at bats. That's just not very often. You know, when their whole team gets five at bats. Yeah. And that's what the Red Sox are getting ready to do. This is Schwarber's fifth at bat. They'll have at least six of them. They get five. Math's pretty good for me, by the way. Yeah, you're just blowing right through this. No, you don't have a calculator, <laughs> just all in your head. You have a great brain, I'd say. Uh, they got four guys with three hits tonight. It's the first time any big league team had four players with three hits in a playoff game since came to in this ballpark in the ALCS in 2008. Uh, they lost that game. They had four guys get three hits and lost in 11 innings. Of course, lost the series in seven games. As he gets him swinging here with a change up. Of course, as a year with the Rays went to the World Series.
Well, here's one of the stars of the game offensively for the Red Sox. Kike Hernandez, two doubles and one of those home runs. You mentioned it. What a great pickup and a really good year. He could play multiple positions, but I think settling in at center field. Lifts the first one that he sees towards the left field corner. That is going to dunk in and bounce around. It's a double. How about four extra base hits for Kike Hernandez? A home run and three doubles. What a night. Yeah, the only bad part for these guys is they're going to have a day off tomorrow. That's when you don't want a day off. Ball looks good coming off the, coming out of the hand the pitcher when these Red Sox get hot. That ball when it hits the pole. Nine runs on 15 hits. Seven of them for extra bases. And yesterday all singles, right? Yeah. Crazy game. Often it is. It's a ball on Devers. Rafael Devers out of the Dominican Republic. Lifts the ball to straightaway center field. Here Myers back at the track, turns and watches it go. Devers joins the home run party. Two run blast to straightaway center. And it is a new Boston postseason record five home runs in this game. It's been a display and even this young man who struggled the first two games see where that pitch is yeah. down. That's where he can get the barrel back down easiest with his issues that he's been dealing with. And another one over the wall. A ball on Bogarts. And for the Tampa Bay Rays, who got great work out of the bullpen yesterday, using some of their lower leverage arms. Not the same story today. 2 0. Combined with Shane McCanahan, the pitcher shut out last night. Today, eight runs on 10 hits over five innings. And again, being a starting pitcher and looking at trends, the Red Sox messed up the every odd <laughs> inning scoring in. Yeah. One, three, five, seven, and now the eighth. Selfish move, really. <laughs> you had that going for you. Chop foul, two and two. No, it is amazing though how from day to day, right? And I mean it. I, I bet you every player wishes there is a way that they could play tomorrow. It's going to be a travel day, of course, or a travel night and day off, so reset. But they're going home where they mash and score a lot more than they do on the road. We'll just take a look here. At home, they're the best in baseball. On average, hit 281 versus 241 on the road. That's where they're headed for games three. And at this point, it looks like guaranteed four, barring a huge rally from the Rays. Swing and a miss, strike three on Bogarts. In this divisional series, every Moonblast home run over 425 feet, FTX is donating $10,000 to charity. This one had to be pretty close, didn't it? 
Oh, definitely. And it was. Oh, yeah. This is 404 at the base of the wall there. Ground ball to first. Choi to the back. With that 425 foot moon blast by Rafael Devers, FTX will be making a $10,000 donation to charity. Play with the longest moon blast of the postseason will choose the charity for the total donation. And they lead 11 6 as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. And Hansel Robles comes on to pitch. Strike one on Wander Franco. It's going to be a good pickup for them, especially lately. Overall number's not great. But down the stretch, 16 consecutive appearances without allowing a run. And that's the thing about the Red Sox the timing of their pen. Like, I didn't think, and a lot of people thought, all right, they're pitching way better early than they were maybe thought they were going to do at some point. Something's got to change. And they just got hot at the right time when they needed it. You know, when the starters kind of faltered a little bit. Starters faltered and Barnes faltered. Yeah. They still found a way to patchwork that pen and make it work. Because when it comes to total numbers, you know, their ERA has not been great for a playoff team. And their starters' ERA is high, but it's their bullpen and relievers that kept them in this thing. And that's part of the deal. People picking up people. That's it. That's what the world's about. <laughs> and Barnes added to the roster today. Garrett Richards placed on the injured list. As Kenny reported before the game. Two more hits today for Wander Franco. Who swings and misses here. Good back foot breaking pitch from Robles. One away in the eighth. Checking with Kevin Burkhardt for a game break.
Dodgers and Giants have been meeting since 1890. This is the first time they've met in the postseason. Should be some kind of series. Two in San Francisco, then it shifts to Dodger Stadium. It's Brandon Lau comes up here and takes a ball. Ray's trying to get Lau going. He's 0 for 3 tonight. He's 0 for 7 in these two games and is hitting just above 100 in the postseason in his career. Yeah, last year was rough. And But it only takes it really does sometimes only take one kind of result that changes your mindset when you come to the plate. And it'd be different if he was you know you're hitting line drives and getting tough outs but. He had a couple hard ones last night. Yep. You know, the big picture he has not been good. In the postseason. Last year mechanics out of whack some. Had that one game in the World Series, we hit two home runs, but outside of that, nothing. And he was hoping, and they were hoping, that it'd be a different story this time around. He's evolved as a hitter, mechanics approach have matured some. Very small sample, but similarly poor results through two games here. On a 2 1 pitch, fouls it into the glove, count evens 2 and 2. Yeah, you try to tell yourself you're never as bad as you think you are, and you're never as good as you think you are. You're somewhere in the middle that usually works itself out, and the numbers become what they do. And but every player's dream is to get locked in at this time of the year. This is when you want to be at your best. On 3 2, Lau fouls it off. One thing you got to be careful uh, when you're facing Robles, he'll quick pitch you out of the stretch. See how he took a long time right there? He quick pitched Franco and struck him out. And the way you do that out of the stretch, because there's nobody on, you can do that. You just change your cadence when you come to the set. You just kind of go quick and slide set, but messes with the timing of the hitter. You only know, need to do it a couple times to be on guard for it. Ball is rifled by him at 99, and that is five consecutive strikeouts for Rays hitters. Need a seventh inning stretch? Hey Siri, tell me more about Apple Fitness Plus. Two gone, eighth inning. Back to back K's for Robles. Sin Nelson Cruz, the batter. Got in on him, ramped over the mound, charging his second arroyo, can't get it, and Cruz is aboard to keep the inning going. That ball had a lot of spin, and Arroyo was trying to get it before it hit the bag, or the potential of it hitting the bag. And the spin kind of crawled up his glove, it looked like. When this ball gets by the pitcher, it's got a lot of spin, and the glove might even have hit it and accentuated it. See how it just climbs up the glove. Was not an easy play. It's a base hit for Cruz. The Rays had three base hits. The bigger part had four base hits in the first inning, including that grand slam from Luplo. That's just their third hit since. And he kept alive for Yandy Diaz.
Red Sox bullpen tonight, John. <laughs> six and two thirds innings. One run on three hits, and they've struck out ten. Oh, it's been outstanding. I mean, the bulk of that, of course, is coming from Hulk. Hulk. Uh, and I and I think it just it, it, it's giving them. It, it couldn't have come at a better time, right? You're down one game to none. The air coming out of their sails there after the first inning, trailing by three after scoring two. And I think sometimes a manager gets too much credit, too much blame. I don't think you can give the manager too much credit right now for what Alex has done with this ball club in a lot of ways. Obviously, what he had overcome and come back from sitting out a year. But then communicating the way he has both managers do a great job of communicating it's, it's a huge skill and it's not a skill set everyone has because there's styles in the way to communicate to get players to play a certain way. Diaz flips a fly ball to right center field Hernandez and Renfro coming together it's Kike Hernandez to end the inning. Want to stay up to date? Just tell Siri, show me the MLB postseason schedule. Off day for these teams tomorrow. Game three at Fenway Park on Sunday. J.D. Martinez, one of the five home runs in this game for the Red Sox. A couple singles as well. This homer was a three-run blast in the fifth inning to break the 5-5 tie. In a game that they once trailed 5-2. Like a Waka for his third inning of work. One ball, one strike. Sure, Alex told him, hey, nothing stupid here in the ninth. He's got a five run lead. Get another day to rest that ankle. He's a 
head up north. And if Fenway Park is anything like it was for the wild card game, oh, you cannot wow. wait to get up there. Be on MLB Network on Sunday. Back on FS1 for game four on Monday. What a difference a day makes. No runs on nine hits, but all singles last night. 11 runs on 16 hits, half of them for extra bases. Five of them leave the park. Franchise record for a postseason game. Two and two. And the way it's heading right now, a very happy flight back home. Got their guy going on Sunday in Evaldi, who has. Shut the Rays down last couple times he's seen that one run over 14 innings his last two starts against Tampa Bay 18 K's in those two games. And he was cruising on Tuesday in the wild card game. He's a freak. Well, I think one of his favorite pitchers was the other freak Nolan Ryan. Here at Whitlock getting ready for the last of the night. Martinez digs it out yanks a base hit towards the left field corner and in his return to the lineup he's got four hits two singles a double and a home run now you got a pitch run for him. first career four hit game in the postseason for J.D. Martinez and they do here comes Danny Santana We're talking about well earned time off his feet. And it gingerly jogs off and gets a hand from a lot of the Red Sox fans who are in the building. That's why if there's any way that he could play, if you can pretty much walk, you got to be in there if you're J.D. Martinez to do what you do. Yeah, he's just. I've never seen a hitter year to year cover what he was deficient in the year before in other words how they were getting him out right and I watched it for three straight years you could get him out change ups all day next year cross change ups maybe sliders and curveballs away one year next year he comes back covers it and that's the constant theme of adjustment and, and all the work he puts in very unique style and how he prepares to hit and it's kind of bled into that team and helped a lot of players. Yeah. Going to on Renfro. I mean, the drills he do he does are very unique. There wouldn't a lot. I'm not, not seeing a lot of hitters do it, you know. And so it works for him. And that's why last year was an outlier, you know, when the video and all the different things that came through and were changed to a guy's cr creature of habit. It affects people in different ways. He did his best uh, hitting coach impression the last few days when he wasn't able to play. So he thinks hitting at a graduate level. What's above that? Doctorate, master level, graduate level doesn't seem high enough. Are you just going over what's on your wall? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> uh. Go back here. Ran for 0 for 4 today. He's grounded into a couple double plays. He's 1 for 8. These two games. 31 home runs in his first season with Boston. He's been a changed hitter since being over here. Big kind of fly ball strikeout. Low average guy and he's improved in every area. Here with the Red Sox. 29 years old fifth full big league year. Goes the other way base hit into right. They will stop Santana at third as Renfro gets in the hit column. They're at the corners with nobody out. Follow all the action of the postseason with the MLB app. Real time tracking of every pitch to in depth analysis of the games. You can download the MLB app today to make this postseason major. 
Christian Vasquez couple hits of his own two of the 18 now for Boston. All right so there you go. Well it's not over yet. But what do you think. Milwaukee and Atlanta. Mm. Do they combine to score this many runs no. in this game at this point. No I don't know that they do. 17 runs here. Yeah. They combined for three today in game one. So they have maximum of four games. I guess if it goes five, yeah, maybe. Right? 14 runs over five games, that's real small. But say it only goes three more? Yeah, I don't know if they combine for 17 runs. Is it's interesting because in the American League, I think the four teams that represent the playoffs probably have the best offense in baseball in the American League, right? Their best offenses are, are kind of in play. Maybe not as much pitching uh, as maybe the National League possesses with some of the teams that are going in the quadrant there and not as much offense. So it's two stylistic kind of battles where you're going to get probably more pitching between. The, uh, the uh, Giants and the Dodgers and the Braves and the Brewers. Oh, two. Ground ball left side. Eats up Diaz. Franco picks it up, makes it close, but it's late. And it's 12 6. As Santana comes in. Just kind of in between again, the hop that climbs up the glove. And see how it hits the corner of his finger there in the glove. And wouldn't it, I don't think it would have been two, but it would have obviously been one out. All right, so now there are five Red Sox that have three hits in this game. I wonder how long that's been. They ruled that a hit. Yeah. Borderline. Yeah. It's trying to fit in with the theme of the night. You know, I yeah. never strike one on Christian Arroyo, who is the only starter. There's always one. To reach. There's always one. It's amazing. Just like there's always that one starter, for whatever reason, on every club, can't get runs. The right. randomness of that is unbelievable. Yeah. Like, what did I do? What did I do to you guys? Did I smell bad. Mean, I don't realize it. It's going to be a run. Oh, and two. Do you have any years like that? Oh, or yeah. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I think every, you know, I mean, you pitch long enough, you're going to, there's no doubt. And yeah. you just can't, you can't explain. You can't put your finger on it. And you just kind of grind it out because there's going to be those moments where when they do pile them on, you better be on the other end ready. Barnes stands up. Whitlock sits down as they add on here. Down on strikes. First out of the inning for Waka. And here comes Bobby Dahlbeck. Replaced Kyle Schwarber earlier defensively. So Vasquez, the fifth Red Sox to get three hits in this game. It ties a postseason record for the most guys in one game with three hits for one team. Boston did this as well. 1999 in the division series against Cleveland. Sixth at bat, right? For the leadoff spot? Yeah. That's good hit. Dahlbeck attacks it and drills it. Foul. Oh, makes a different sound coming off of this fellow's bat. Yeah, I, I like him a lot. I, I know he went through his struggles early, but they got a good one here. I think this is a long term kind of. Pencil him in. Just raw power. Well, two way player at Arizona. In fact, the day that he got drafted, he threw eight and two thirds shutout innings in a super regional game. 
There were some teams that wanted to draft him as a pitcher. His preference, though, was always hitting. Just a tremendous athlete. Part of the reason they were okay was saying, okay, you're going to go play first base. Devers playing third. You think no matter where we put you, your athleticism is going to allow you to be okay there. And he's made big strides defensively at first. Bobby says he's having a lot more fun. Guilty of really pressing, really being hard on himself. I mean, easy to do in that market, especially when you showcase your debut with, uh oh, this guy's going to hit 40. Yeah, that was fun, but now everybody expects yeah. the world. Yeah. Certain parts of this country, you've got to be able to deliver quicker than normal because the expectations are higher. Part of what makes Boston special. Absolutely. He eventually found it this year. Final two months, he was as good as any hitter, as powerful as any hitter in the American League. And became the first Red Sox rookie to hit 25 home runs since Noma. 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 Two on, one out. Running the bank here in the ninth. Dahlbeck pulls it foul. When I, uh, I'd like to have the redo. You know, everyone asks you, would you like a redo in one of your? I would like to redo when I went to Boston, trying to come back from shoulder surgery. But having said that, I was pitching against Nomar when he was a visitor coming in, and it was the longest standing ovation I have ever wow. seen in my life. Like when you're on the mound, 30 seconds is an eternity. I think this was like two minutes, <laughs> and I just stepped through back of the mound, and you know, he stepped out of the box. And they gave him one of the longest in my memory that I could ever remember standing ovation. I'm trying to think, I think he was with the A's maybe then? Did he, he yeah, play for the he A's? Did. I tried to block out all the moments they weren't very good for the Red Sox. <laughs> I, I raised my career ERA. I didn't think it was possible. Like, kicks away, up the line, runners advance. I was so bad. I think I entered the, my final year with a 3-1-1 ERA, something okay. like that. Career, you're saying? Yeah, 3.13. Yeah. Or it ended at 3.33. That's tough to do because you pitched no. a few games. That's impossible to do. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't go well. Uh, and I wanted wow, so bad yeah. to do well. 37 runs and in 40 innings will do that to oh, man. I thought there was more I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't help. I was tipping my pitches too. By oh, the way. That'll do you. Yeah. Another one to Dahlbeck. The foul. As you talk, we talked about the fan base. Is. Incredible. And they were incredible to me just. And really never having done anything for them but but the opportunity to play for that organization was pretty cool. Nine pitch coming here to Bobby Dahlbeck. The rookie fouls it off. This is a guy who swings and misses a lot typically. But the strikeouts have gone down as the power has gone up over the final couple months. Marathon going here. Marathon going in Boston in a yes. couple days. Yes. Yeah, let's see if it shifts up there. It's going to be a lot going on in Boston. I was thinking about running in that. Yeah, why don't you go give that a shot? Just you got to run it fast so you can get to the game. Oh, that's right. right that's so. <laughs> <laughs> Dalbeck eventually succumbs to a changeup. You might want to hurry to Boston, settle in for a good day of football tomorrow. Big Noon kickoff crew is live from Iowa City at 10 a.m. Eastern. Then it's Maryland and 7th ranked Ohio State. Penn State and Iowa. Top five matchup at 4 o'clock Eastern. A huge Big Noon Saturday on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Who you got in that one? Iowa or Penn State? <sighs> That's a really hard place to go win. So I'm just going to go to the home team. Hernandez 
four extra base hits yeah. in this game. Home run, three doubles. Have a day. He's had some in the postseason. He had a three home run game. Sent the Dodgers to the World Series a couple years ago. It's Wrigley Cubs, Field. Right? Yeah. No. He's never had a four hit game in the postseason until now, though. It's Homer tonight, his ninth in the postseason. We had the game tying home run in game seven of the NLCS last year. He's got him in second and third with two gone here in the ninth. Another chance for Hernandez and a foul ball one and two. Well, he's up there attacking. I mean, there's no fooling around when he gets in the box. He's he may not be big in stature and height and weight, but he plays big as if every pitch is in that zone. He's trying to you know, catch the gaps or hit it over the wall. On this one two, Hernandez strokes another right center field. Kiki Hernandez with his fifth hit of the game. Number five has five. He drives in two more, and it's 14 to six. What an explosion for Kike Hernandez and the Red Sox in game two. And they have taken the tone of this series and turned it on its head. First career five hit game regardless and it comes in the postseason. The 2021 American League Divisional Series presented by Good Sam. It was all Rays in game one. It's all Red Sox in game two. 14 runs on 20 hits. Five of them from Kike Hernandez. And now JT Chagua, second appearances in, min in as many games in this series.
Devers has one of the five home runs after walking a couple times. Hit hard to right. A go is there. And that's the inning. They add on, and it's 14 6 to the bottom of the ninth. What a performance from these Red Sox offensively tonight. That's been the star of the show. Kike Hernandez, four extra base hits, five hits total, 14 runs on 20 hits tonight for the Boston Red Sox, and they sure picked a good time for the offense to come to life. It's the first time they've had 20 hits in any game in two years, and it's going to even this series up 1-1 going back to Boston. Yeah, sometimes you wish, I'll save just a little bit for the <laughs> next game, but in this case, they, they've kind of reset the focus of and the tone of this series, right? A game's just a game, but sometimes the way you win a game can bleed over and give you a little bit more confidence, especially when you're going home. And I think that's where they're at right now on a confidence state scale. That is going to be a madhouse. Family Park on Sunday. Jim and Joy fouls off the first pitch from Matt Barnes. Quite a journey for him over this season. He was an all-star in the first half for good reason as the closer for the first time but collapsed down the stretch and in the middle of that signed a long term extension. A couple of years extended him through 2023 the team option for 2024. Missed a couple of weeks in September on the covid list. He's been better since but in low leverage spots and was left off the roster initially just added today and they had to take Garrett Richards off. Yeah. Talk about a roller coaster. Oh. Uh, that's a lot to deal with, and certainly the frustration of being left off. But now you got to turn yourself back into what you once were in the first half. And it's got to start with his fastball command. When you lost his fastball command, it puts a lot of pressure on that breaking ball to hit. And I think he'll be fine, and the Red Sox will be happy when he gets back to pouring those fastballs in for strikes or outs. And that is what he was doing early on. He talked about it. He said the difference in him in recent seasons was that he stopped chasing strikeouts and just started pounding the zone and yeah. trusting his stuff. 
Yeah, it's it's hard for a lot of young pitchers to do today because so much of the evaluation on them is either the miles per hour or the strikeouts per nine innings. But getting outs is key, and being available for your team more often by getting outs, less pitches. Oh boy! All right. I mean, you could work your way into a uh, two-walk, three-strikeout inning and think you're doing a great job. But guess what a two walk three strikeout inning does your pitches go up to about right. 28 or 30 and you can't be used three days in a row or two out of four. It's Austin Meadows looks like going to hit for Margo. Twelve of the last 13 runs scored by Boston. It was 5 2 Tampa after an inning. That's cracked up the middle second hit for Choi off of the bench. So it looks like a split here in Tampa Bay. Yeah, I'm going to head up to Fenway Park. Drew Rasmussen, yet another rookie. Converted reliever. Taking on Nathan Avaldi, who was fantastic in the wild card game and was dominant against these Rays the last two times you saw him. Austin Meadows had a bounce back season. A rough 2020, but 27 home runs this year, 106 runs batted in, top 10 in the league. Left handed starters the first two games, though. It's Meadows coming off of the bench. Margot getting the start. And to me, that stat still matters a lot. I know they try to take away certain stats in the game, like runs. Batted in. That's the goal of every position player that plays the game is to drive in runs. And 106 is no joke. So driving in runs, when you get to this level and you get to this tournament, the team that drives them in is going to win. The team that puts it in play is going to win. The team that swings and misses too much typically is not going to win. And he's had some big runs better in this season. Oh, Among the oh, leaders oh. in all baseball and go ahead RBIs. RBIs late in games. Out of those 27 home runs Austin Meadows has hit, 24 of them have come in wins. He's been an important player. And another piece in the Chris Archer deal that brought tonight's starter Shane Boz over from Pittsburgh. Francisco Mejia waiting for his turn. But you'll see stat lines in this game with like 25 homers, 52 RBIs, and 160 strikeouts. Yeah. Give me this. 106, 27. Inside. Still got the strikeouts. Yeah. But I'd like to know how many of those strikeouts came with runners on second and third and less than two outs versus leading off an inning or man on first. You know, there's a big difference in when you strike out. Sure. Got a runner at first here. And it takes him inside. Count goes four. Former ninth overall pick out of high school in Georgia. Oh, yeah. Remember him? George of the Woods. Right. He's got a brother who uh, is an outfielder in the Tigers organization. 3 2 pitch. Got him with a high fastball. Now that strikeout in a closer game, that'd be a, a really bad strikeout. Yeah. Right? Swing at ball four. But down eight. Let it eat. I guess. You don't want to strike out, but no. you're trying to make something happen. Francisco Mejia. Another trade acquisition came over from the San Diego Padres. He takes ball one. It's part of the Blake Snell deal. 
along with three others that includes Luis Patino has been an important piece of the pitching staff. Shane Boz whose first postseason start was a short one. There's two and a third tonight. See that front shoulder he's really to try to generate velocity when you start pulling your fastball that means you're not staying back and the front side's not as quiet. And I think when you're struggling these are all normal things you're trying to search and find you don't want to search and find in the meet in the middle of battle in the heat of the battle but as a reliever you don't get, get bullpen sessions. And making the adjustment has been a little bit more difficult this second half and you can just see the wheels are spinning and you're trying to figure out OK how do I get back locked in. He's missed three consecutive pitches on the inside part of the plate, which tells you mechanically he's not staying back and he's trying to generate too much velocity. Ball four. Blocks him on four pitchers. So a pinch hit walk for Francisco Mejia. And a couple base runners for the Rays here in the ninth inning for the nine hitter Kevin Kiermaier. Glancing at that uh, Dodger Giant game, they're flying. Top of the fifth inning. That game started like an hour ago. Oh, that's what I meant What's about that? the difference philosophies yeah. of how they get about wins in the National League playoffs is going to be low scoring, timely hitting, and a little bit of a soccer. I mean, you know, I I might scream like they scream when a run scores in those series, like a soccer goal. <laughs> Guy oh. run. Crossing home plate, ripping his shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. 106 against 107, is that right? Yeah. 107 against 107 if you count the wild cards. That's true. Yeah. What a terrifying thing for the Dodgers to go into that wild card game, winning 106 games. Yeah. We, knowing it could all end. Uh, I, you know. I know. I, I don't mean to open. Pandora's it's got to change. For you. It's got to change. It will change. I don't know when, but the playoffs, especially this year, the way it shook shook out, it it, it got a little lucky for it to work out the way it should have. But yeah. can't have that happen. You don't want to add too many teams where it waters it down. No, you don't have to do that. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of easy, simple fixes. I mean, just if you keep the format the way it is right now, and the wild card teams play each other, and you have a lesser wild card team facing a team, they got to beat them twice. There's importance of, of winning all those games. But you know, if you think about it and break it down, you play 162 games every single series. It's a series, every single one. You don't play just one. And you play for the reason to win 106, 107 games, to dominate and win your division. So, however it shakes out, you got to have a series. You got to have a two out of three. And if you lose that, well, so be it. And I say when you host it, you host all three games. It go even further to put the importance on on the amount of wins. What about so just use this situation as an example. St. Louis goes to Dodger Stadium. They play at noon. If the Dodgers win the Dodgers move on. The Cardinals win. They play a second game that night. Yeah. Go ahead. Absolutely. Got to beat them twice. Absolutely. No there's, there's no problem when you don't win your division and you get to that point. You've got to give. The team that what did they win? How many more games did they win? The Cardinals? Cardinals rallied late, but wound up what? 15 more wins. Definitely the largest gap. There's 16 wins. Largest gap between the two wild card teams yeah. we've seen. And you know you can you can make the point. The birth of it started in 1993 when we. Beat the Giants on the final game of the season. 104 wins for us, 103 for them. They didn't even get a chance to play in the playoffs. Yep. So that kind of gave that momentum. I think that's run its course, and now we can advance it a little bit more. It was the Dodgers that helped you out on that final day of the sure was. We needed, 
The Dodgers one year and the Giants one year. Grounded to first, Dahlbeck rifles to second. They turn it to first, not in time. Good stuff by Bobby Dahlbeck to get the runner at second. And the Rays down to their last out. I remember going to bed the night before. I couldn't stay up to watch the Giants and the, and the Dodgers play the game. I was pitching a potential clincher for the for the Braves, and I and I I went to bed, and and the team that needed to lose was winning. When I went to bed, I went to bed in a bad mood. I woke up and back then. You checked the paper and check, you know TV, and I found out that they lost, and I was so fired up to know that that outing. If we win, goes in the postseason. And then the following year, we needed the opposite to happen. We, you know, we had the two teams that kind of hate each other, playing each other and knocking each other out. Yeah. And now they're in the playoffs for the first time. First time. Rosarena runners at the corners, two gone, and ball one. Rosarena singled in the first pitch of the night from Chris Sale, came in to score in that five-run first inning. 0 for 3 since then. Ready to take his talents and show up to Fenway Park. He loves the big environment. He loves the spotlight. The series at Yankee Stadium over the weekend. First time that he played there and they're giving him a hard time. The guys in the bleachers and he was turning around giving it right back to him and telling him in the dugout Randy like good you're having fun man. But every time you turn around to talk smack back to the fans you move yourself a few steps away from where you want you. Move yourself off your spot. So have fun, but stay in the right spot. Yeah. Three balls, one strike. Speaking of which, until they outlawed it, they used to have little spray painted spots in the outfield for positioning when teams would go in. Make it a lot easier on Randy to say what he needs to say. Full count. What became a battle of the bullpens tonight? Tampa Bay's allows 11 runs over six and two thirds. Red Sox pen has given up just one over what will be eight innings once this finishes. Bases loaded. More chance for Wander Franco, who is not disappointed here in his postseason debut. Two hits in both games. Choi at third, Kiermaier at second, and Rosarena at first. Land to pull. And he takes ball one. Yeah, the Red Sox, they would have kept it interesting for me on the bench. Because you get to play the area code game yeah, the entire got? time. 202, 204, 401, and then 123. What is 123 area code? Is it one? I don't think I don't think 123 is uh, I feel like we'd know oh. it if it was one. Right. Right. We went around one and one. Once again, there is no one, two, three area code in North America. Hmm. Got to go overseas for that. Mm -hmm. At DC, Rhode Island, Manitoba. I think that's in. That's the 401. Yeah, I think that's in. Of course, Canada, north of the border. Oh yeah. 
the 401 Manitoba. For sure. <laughs> there it is folks 202 204 401. And then you go with the seventh one two three. Silly games we play. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Here it comes. Stick it high. You know the other one we used to play. And you can only play it around the midway season to three quarters of the season. You see if the batting average and the at bats match up, or the time of day with the batting average and or at bats. But right around you know 300 at bats, start losing your average and at bats around that area, and you see how long that can continue. Two two. On the hands, punched to short. It heads back to Boston, tied at a game apiece. Boy, if you if you know you're going to give up five runs with Chris Sale on the mound in the first inning, you're probably not feeling good about your chances. But then your offense goes out and gets 14 runs on 20 hits. Outstanding day for the offense. It's really the kind of offense they've had all year and the capability. And wow, did they put on a show. Yeah, and then the bullpen just one run over eight innings. So the Rays give up the 11 runs over six and two thirds out of the pen. So a game of pieces, it goes to Fenway Park.